and welcome to episode 69 of Games My Mom Found. I am Mike Elberton, and who are the Jedi with me tonight? Uh, Jolie Stan, Stuart Hughes. <laughs> and Riley. <laughs> welcome aboard. <laughs> and no Stefan, maybe later. Hopefully later. He's hopefully, hopefully later. coming, but I, I don't know, because I can't get a hold of him. He is uh, <laughs> previously engaged. Um, a couple quick things that I do want to get out of the way that we started since it is a new month. I because what I as we've been doing each month now is we kind of give a shout out to whatever state of the United States and whatever country had the most downloads each month. So first for states, I want to give a quick shot, big shout out to Texas downloaded us the most this month. Last few months has been Oklahoma. <laughs> this month it was Texas. I think it's Texas. Well, I'm part of that reason, but oh. <laughs> a lot of promoting in my own way. And then for the world, Mexico was the top download this this for this month. So, hey. <laughs> and since everything's people. bigger in Texas, we actually got a lot more downloads, too, didn't we? Yeah. We right. just hit uh, 25,000? No, no, no. We're not that close. We are... We're getting there. We are at 22,500. 22,500. <laughs> we're not far away from 25,000. We should, at the rate we're going, we should hit it next month. I, I just try... <laughs> whenever you send the stats, I try, like, not to look at them too much because i'm like i don't want i don't want to like just have the stats in my head constantly <laughs> oh I, tr- I know how it feels trust me i that's, they're in my head constantly i i refresh this thing non-stop i can tell you what time we get more downloads oh, i know it way too well Not i'm always thing. afraid that like we're gonna do something different and it's gonna blow up and none of us are gonna really like doing it but that gets the numbers so that's how we're gonna start like changing <laughs> uh, I, I i don't see us doing anything that we don't like in the first place <laughs> yeah <laughs> so other Start two things I, I did want to say is one, I want to say if you do like this podcast, if you have been listening to to us for even since your first episode, please tell a friend, tell a coworker, tell a random customer that comes into your store, make a Facebook post, make a tweet about it. Anything you can, and even that simple thing will help us out a ton to help grow our listeners, especially during the pandemic when people aren't working as much and listening to podcasts, unfortunately. Yeah. So, so you should make a shirt on Animal Crossing to promote it. Oh, I should. That's a good you idea. Should. We also should make our own shirts too. I should make our own shirts too. How's that coming, by the so way? So busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So I, I got like I got like a good day where I got like three done. Oh, like, so we're close. All at once. And then I got swamped by because I still go to school and school is closed. So I got to go to online classes now Yay. in like five states over. And they teach everything completely differently. And I have to email the teacher every day and be like, what do you mean by this? <laughs> And then she doesn't respond to me. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm just fucked. <laughs> and hopefully by June, we can get even up a few shirts we have. At least for something's up. Oh, and the thing that's on the mug, you should make, we should make that into a shirt too. Because... Yes, we should. Yeah, that'd be easy. <laughs> also, Riley, feel free to just interrupt us because... Um, yeah. You're totally fine. <laughs> oh, and last thing before we introduce... Well, actually, Stu, do you want to introduce what gamer we talked about since this was your pick? Sure. We are and I'll playing say my thing. the 2003 masterpiece, Star Wars... TM Knights of the Old Republic TM <laughs> because the box of the game has like a thousand trademarks all over it. But yeah, we're playing the the critical uh, Bioware Obsidian like game changer uh, Knights of the Old Republic. It was it was voted um, in a couple polls as some of the, one of the greatest Xbox games of all time. Like, I think it's still in, in one decade. of the greatest games ever made. Uh, I totally agree. It's I mean like if 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 people haven't played this game and you've played any rpg like say up to like 2015 maybe or just like any mass effect any bioware game they're all still based on this system (laughs) like every this game basically like it was around a little bit beforehand but this game took like dungeons and dragon rules and cemented it into like how games are made for years it was like uh like halo with shooters like it just it basically defined the genre for for years and then disney got rid of it <laughs> oh, Dis- disney the- pretends like it doesn't happen <laughs> yeah until it do- until they change their mind but one thing another thing to mention is that there is a chance that this episode with it being star wars and with it being a very long game and an rpg this might be an episode i break in half and if that does happen you're gonna hear half of it your normal night that you would that we that we go live and then the other half will be a couple days later in the same week Yes. In case that does happen, I just mainly so that Mike is able to edit it. <laughs> Pretty much because when we first did this, I you, I was off on Mondays, so I could just edit all day Monday, but that changed. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And yeah, we Plus, still haven't changed. And I know about the game. We're gonna oh, yeah. completely obliterate the your timing. Yeah, That's long time right. listeners who are familiar with the Resident Evil episode, um, be ready for that, but with Star Wars. <laughs> 
Yeah. I've got Sam is my friend who I talk about Resident Evil with, and Riley is my friend who I talk about Star Wars with. <laughs> it's Star- this might have been the game that we like bonded over. Like I was about to say, I should probably mention ago. this is like why we're friends. <laughs> I, I think it genuinely is. I think I we went to college together, and freshman year, I walked we walked into your room looking for your roommate, and you had a giant Star Wars poster in your wall. I remember, and I was just like, yeah. "You like Star Wars?" And you're like, "Yeah, we're like best friends forever." <laughs> <laughs> and that was pretty much it. That was basically it. That was like what eight years ago, and yeah. we're, we're both still playing this stupid game. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like spent, I think, yeah, yeah, I think our we we both like Star Wars, and we're like we're friends now. And then we both realized that we liked the Old Republic, and I think we just started arguing over which was better, Knights of the Old Republic or Knights of the Old Republic Two. <laughs> I think that was like the defining moment of our friendship is that argument. <laughs> And then we later found out that we were the same person. Yeah, but, that's pretty know. disturbing. <laughs> All right. Um, for those that don't know, I mean, yes, this takes place in the Star Wars universe, but the Old Republic takes place 4,000 years before the movies, if I'm yes. correct. Okay. Yeah. Is Which is their way, I guess, of like, we. this way we can do a story that doesn't matter, that won't, you know, affect what's going on. Yeah. So to yeah. set the stage a little bit for what's going on in this story, since it's 4,000 years in the past, the, the Galactic Republic is a lot smaller it's a lot more isolated. There's not as many planets involved in it. There is a Sith Empire that also exists uh, cool. in this well, world. I mean, but first, you got to talk about the Mandalorian Wars. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> first. first. Yeah. So at some point, Mandalore the Ultimate, uh, who is, I think, the not the oldest Mandalore in in the in the extended expanded universe, but. But he's been he was like around for forever. Yeah, he was a uh, an old warlord that decided to take over the galaxy and basically just started dominating the Republic. The, like if you watch the Mandalorian or if you played any Star Wars games, you know, the Mandalorians are really tough. They just started like taking over the galaxy, enslaving everybody. And the Jedi had to the, Je- the Republic had to fight back. And the Jedi were like, oh, we're not getting involved in this mess. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, they were like, no, nah, not our problem. Yeah. You can go deal with it. If the, I guess we'll all just start speaking Mandalorian in a couple of years. No big deal. <laughs> and uh, a young upstart Jedi named Revan and his apprentice Malak took over and started fighting the Mandalorians with the, what are they called? The Jedi Crusaders? The Crusaders, yeah. yeah. And a lot of people follow them because Revan was known as like this really charismatic sort of like famous apprentice. Yeah, I don't. He wasn't a master yet, but no, basically led a was... lot of people. I think he was a Jedi Knight um, at that point. I think he was a, oh no, I think you're right. Yeah, he is a knight. He's not, he but he's a not a knight. master. And his, Malak was like his friend and kind of later like, became his apprentice. Later his apprentice. Uh, probably unwillingly. Yeah. <laughs> they started fighting, took over, took took down the Mandalorians, and uh, all was okay for a couple of years. But it was a bit of a it was a, a pyrrhic victory. The Republic was just crippled by it. And so Revan said, "Hey, I know what I can do." I'll hire all those Mandalorians back and uh, I'll start taking over the Republic myself. I'll do it myself. Was the Sith <laughs> Empire around and... Oh, I should say there will oh. be spoilers for this game, but we will try to skip the big spoiler until I will give a warning. We'll try to do it later on the show. <laughs> yeah, we'll try to spoil yeah, the game way late. And but also... Uh, the Sith Empire was had already been around, correctly. Like it wasn't Revan that well, started it. Well... <laughs> sort of. So, Both me and Riley, well... <laughs> well, so the Sith Empire has been basically sort of like... It, not extinct like it's not the actual like sith species but it's in the outer rim like so it's away from everybody else and yeah. and the story that revan and malik after the mandalorian wars encounter the sith empire who had been nudging the mandalorian wars to start a sort of like push to weaken the republic and then when they encounter the sith that's when revan comes back with kind of their support you find out later in the old republic the mmo rpg yeah we'll probably talk there's about the a... mmo as well <laughs> just yeah but that's there yeah. yeah there's like a whole other thing there but the Sith <laughs> empire is basically like doing the puppet strings in the background but it wasn't that big at the time of the mandalorian wars to the republic yeah because it was just the one planet at first uh korriban correct um, no it's existing outside of like the outer rim so like like on undocumented planets and stuff there's, okay. um yeah there's it's it is confusing because there's there's the republic and then there's the sith empire and then there's like the sith empire the sith is yeah. the sith is not a it's, uh, okay it's, we're, we're gonna try to avoid talking about knights of the republic too but a lot of this covered <laughs> in it there's the sith as an idea that exists as an empire and then there's like the sith the people that exist outside the uh outs- it's not the it's they're in the outer rim i think right 
they're like oh yeah the outer yeah. rim or outside the outer they're rim. In another part of the, the galaxy um, that's not in the realm of the republic or even close to it yeah so revan and malik go off they encounter the sith empire and uh vitiate who is like a huge part of the mmo yeah uh, and they come back and they start their sith empire which is called like for all intents and purposes it's called the sith empire but i think it's it's a bit confused because there's that's the sith empire and then then there's the sith the species the that species. is the sith yeah and what? then revan's yeah like specific <laughs> following was also called uh revan had his own like following too within the sith empire and outside the sith empire that kind of like is that kind of becomes like separate from everything called the revan kists yeah <laughs> so i have no idea what you're talking about and i just beat this game <laughs> basically there's there's the republic there's in... the sith yeah. okay <laughs> revan led the sith malik his apprentice uh killed him or tried to kill him to take over um i think the game says like oh he defeated revan well he he shoots his ship down yeah with uh bastillo on board as as she, it turns out bastillo becomes involved and she's she's like the main jedi that follows you around and she's like um we'll get into her whole story but yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so basically at the start of the game you have the republic you have the sith led by malik and uh you're just a random Random nobody thrown into the mix. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of where the RPG elements come in this game, because you can pick what class you want to start as. Does it even make yes. any difference who you pick? Yeah. Yes. It, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it does based on how many skills you can get and how you want your character to be balanced. Yeah, basically, um, if there's... Yeah, when the game starts, I, I, I don't know why I love the opening screen of this game so much, because it's when such a When you, like, simple, wake up you know? in your bed? No, no, like when you're just picking your class and it's like oh. there's like three uh three male characters and four and three female characters and it's like one scoundrel, one soldier and one uh scout on yes. each side. Oh. And that's like you picking your characters and I don't know why I love just that screen of like six people to go as. It's maybe just because there's so many possibilities there, <laughs> but the correct way to play the game is always a scoundrel. <laughs> Absolutely. Scout. scout is good. Uh, Scout's like the balance between the two. Soldier basically gets more health and defense. But um, the skills you get, like every time you level up, I like I feel like it's half of the other two. Yeah, it's it's garbage. And scoundrel gets like the most skills, and then you scout, get more I... with the scout, I think, than the scoundrel. But I might be mistaken because I think with the scoundrel you only get two, and one of them they give you automatically. I think the scout gets more attributes and the scoundrel gets more skills. I think this. You might be right. I only ever play as scoundrel. I only ever play as scoundrel. Yeah, basically, yeah, you got three characters to play as. And it's just it, like the first time you're playing the game, don't worry about it. I always pick scoundrel <laughs> and I always pick scoundrel because we can get a shitload of blocks way more for you to do. Uh, like you can like throw your, you know, your persuasion. I think scoundrel is the only one that can get like max persuasion. Is that true? Throw I, I think so. I think with Scout and Soldier, you can't get max persuasion because part of it's like based on uh, like the scoundrel's luck and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's basically just like your ability to you either want to be like a strong like solo tank character or do you want to have a lot of skills and play the game like a little bit uh, a little bit like roguish like of like, oh, I don't know if I can win this battle, but I could persuade this person not to fight me or I could like in this battle a different way. You get like the like the demolition checkpoints sometimes. It's like Oh, I just make Karth the demolitions guy. I hate demo I hate demolitions. Oh, Mission Veo is the demolitions lady. Yeah, but I don't use mission after a certain point. Or Juhani but... and Jolie. We'll get to we'll get uh, to the companions. Sure. <laughs> Mike, which skills did you focus on? <laughs> I did auto level up, so I have no idea. <laughs> oh my god. The only thing I picked was auto. the second dual wielding. So he, I could dual wield, and after that I just said, fuck it, I don't care. Auto level up me. I don't want to see and I just because I don't know what in these type of games, I don't know how to do my stats, and I just don't want to even I just let the game do it for me. <laughs> That's fair. It's um the like the stats are I like I remember the first time I played this, I was like so overwhelmed by it. And then going back, I'm like, I know exactly which stats I prefer because I know exactly who I can travel with to balance it. Because I I remember this game first came out for Xbox. I had a friend that I don't talk to anymore. <laughs> and um, he's, I might, he, he might listen, so I have no idea. But he got he was so excited for this game because he was a big Star Wars fan. And he was the reason I even knew this game existed. He bought an Xbox exclusively for this game. Oh, yeah. And I, I remember it. And I also didn't even realize so I was looking at on the Wikipedia right now of recording that this actually came out on Xbox first. And then it came out on PC later in the same year. Yes, that was a big deal, not, actually, for Xbox. 
Xbox. Uh, they hadn't had like a exclusive RPG at the time, and PlayStation was just killing them with their oh, yeah. exclusives. And PS2 this was like the uh, best. Yeah, th- this was like the big thing for Xbox. This was like this is like they were like we need to we need to get an RPG on this system. We need to to boost these numbers. And Bioware came out and made Old Republic, and it just it dominated the market for so long. I actually I played it back then, and I got all the way to the final fight and could not beat it. That I that I never came back to it until <laughs> oh, just wow. two weeks ago for the podcast. And this was back in two thousand four or five. <laughs> What's funny is you said that to me and Stefan in the chat, and both of us immediately were like, "You gotta attack the pods, Mike." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I, I, I don't think either I didn't do that back... Like, looking back now, I we'll get to it, but I, I don't understand how I couldn't have figured it out or I just didn't give a shit, I don't know. <laughs> I think the first time I played it, I got stuck on that for a while. It seems obvious now, but I, when I was a kid, I was just, like, so focused on, on getting Malik. Um, yeah, I had the I internet, ran though. away from him and, can't, like, constantly healed, and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I beat it the first time when I was, like, eight or nine or <laughs> ten when this game came out. <laughs> I love that that's also a strategy, like, running away and healing is totally strategy in this game. Uh, literally, that's how I beat it the first time, is I ran away, I would heal, I would get, like, maybe, like, one of the... We'll talk about it later, but one of the force powers into him and then run away and heal again and just wait for everything to reload. That's why um, that's why Atten is the best companion out of all the games, because he can after he gets down, he gets back up. And so you just you can stay in a corner and heal <laughs> not in this game. I don't think No, Atten is sadly not in this game. None of the um, none of oh. the characters in the second game. None of your companions. Well, that's not true, actually. I was going to say none you of your see, companions are you in the second see, game. But You see Karth in the second game. You see Karth, you see Bastila, you see Kandorus. Um, well, kind of. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there. a lot of the Jedi Masters are like called back to or appear to. Like, Vrook Lamar is a big um, fucking Vrook Lamar. God damn it. <laughs> Vrook Lamar is in both games, pretty importantly. Oh, I do have a couple questions about like kind of the background. So as you were saying, like with the Sith Empire... And, like, how many years was it supposed to be, like, in between that Revan had been in charge, they ever say? Um, it oh, was... I, can, I read this earlier today. So the Mandalorian Wars last, like, a couple of years. When Revan comes back, two years into the battles with, or to, into the war with him is when Revan's ship gets attacked and Malak usurps. Yeah. And then you're the, the following, you're the third year. Yeah, and one of the big things in this game is... um. They like constantly because this game is made in the dialogue. That's that's where this game takes place. There's like there's battles in it, but the dialogue is the game. Um, And they make a big point to like say like, oh, the Sith Empire came. But like they just they grew so fast, like they came out of nowhere. Unrealistically fast. It's unbelievable how they built an empire. So familiar, doesn't it? Like all of a sudden you'd have all these Star Destroyers equipped with the Death Star weapon on them in the course of what, 10, 20 years. I mean, it's weird. I don't want to talk Who about would it. think that would ever happen? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh well, well, I'm sure Riley and I at some point, I'm holding it back, but I, I've been ready all day to start ranting about the prequels <laughs> and how this game does what the prequels were trying to do so much better. I'm telling you that if they just made the two Kodar games into their own trilogies, they'd have masterpieces. They like, can't because Revan can't be canon for some reason. Revan is canon because Revan's in the Old Republic. Uh, well, yeah, and but his, the old, and his son is there too. Is the old Republic Revan falls canon? in and out of canon so much, though. Because of the movie, yeah. no, um, no, the, the MMO. Yeah, okay. Funny. But I thought something Although, happened well, in the newest movie that made something from Kotor canon. Well, I'm going to tell you this right now, Mike. Every single time a new Star Wars anything comes out, be it a game, a movie, an episode of the Clone Wars or Rebels. The internet freaks out and goes, this is why Revan is canon now. Oh, okay. It happens every single time. And I'm sorry to say he's he's not like the Revan in these games is not really canon. <laughs> no, I would, one, yeah, that, that's fair. The you name Revan is canon. There was a Revan in the canon history. But, but it's not the Revan in these two games. It's not the Revan that we love. We know and love and hate. Oh. Yeah, every I mean, single time. Like, I'm okay with like, that. I love the I love the Clone Wars. I watched every new episode of the Clone Wars, and every time a new episode would come out, there'd be some YouTube video saying like, and "This is why Revan is canon now." <laughs> it's like no, they didn't even say the name in it. There was going to be a cut scene in uh, a, like there's a there's an arc in the Clone Wars where Obi Wan, Anakin, and Ahsoka get stuck on this planet with these three powerful Force users, oh, and yeah. there was a there was a cut scene from that where Revan actually shows up um, <gasps> as a Force ghost. Fun fact for you, <laughs> but it was like. 
a to- again, it was like a totally different Revan to who we knew. She looked the same, but the way he like the what he was talking about was like completely different. He was talking about basically how it, it's annoying because in the canon, Revan is just a Sith Lord. And in the games, he is so much more than just a Sith Lord. Yeah. It's uh, it's kind of annoying. They, they're always like, yeah, like he shows up and he's just talking to like the, the Dark Force user about how um, like they all like all the Sith Lords like for, foresaw what was going to happen with Darth Vader and everything that they've done has led up to this. And like, you need to embrace hate. And it's like, no, that's not what Revan was about. <laughs> he was a tactician. Literally, I was about to say literally the opposite. Like Revan is so much more like Thrawn than yeah. he is like any sort of like Darth whatever. Yeah, he's not. Like in, in the games, he is kind of a power fantasy character because he's mastered the Jedi arts and he's mastered the Sith arts, but that's not his character. His character is like very complex. It's very based on everything he did in the wars was based on strategy and just no, like understanding and knowing how the other side works. Rather than me that uh, Revan's going to disappear because a bunch of whales for thirty years. That we're trying to tell me. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's Star Trek like, reference. Yes. No, it's uh, <laughs> Clone oh, no. Wars when Thrawn goes away. in Rebels. The way oh, Thrawn yeah. spoiler oh. has to do with whales. Yeah, it's, it's dumb. Um, yes. But he's not I dead. Some parts of the Rebels I really like, like, and some parts I really don't. Um, <laughs> it's called "How Do We Get Rid of This Character?" Because he can't be around when Luke Skywalker's around. Is what it's called. Yeah. Basically. How do you write out Th- Thrawn and Revan? And... Because if you would have had, if you would have had Thrawn in the original trilogy, it would have been one movie: the death of Luke Skywalker, and that was it. How do we yeah. avoid talking about Darth Bane, even though his he invented the way the Sith work? <laughs> but yeah, that's another big thing: is like the dichotomy between all the characters in this game. Like Revan is Revan is the tactician; like he built the Sith Empire. He knew. He, because he helped the Republic win the Mandalorian Wars, he knew how to disable the Republic. Not conquer them, but disable them and take them over. Yeah, um, and it's also why Malik is losing the war. But, yeah. Well, not losing, but has lost such a huge advantage that he was, he's basically just a soldier who was used to taking, like, commands and stuff. And then once Revan is not in charge of him, he doesn't know how to run an empire. Yeah, Revan's the, like, Revan's the, I'll knock out their communications and starve them out. And Malik is, I'll send everybody I have full force for, to the front <laughs> gates. And it never works out for Malik, which is just hilarious. <laughs> okay, it can't be just me, but why do the Mandalorians look so, they, I don't like the way Mandalorians look in this game. Like, I, I like Mandalorian where you get them in the current trilogy like where Fett. they are in Star Wars. But in the in the Nitro Republic world, they just look like, they look stupid to me. That was the like helmet. A- big point for them um, making this game was to to figure out th- I, I love like despite the fact that like the the prequel movies are not great i love listening to the stage designer like the set designers and all of them talk about it because there's such an important aspect to we need to take what is in star wars and we need to age it back two thousand four thousand years what like where did this design come from yeah and so i i I thought the Mandalorians looked really goofy and dumb the first time, and now I have a whole new appreciation for them because they're like the way their helmets look is so based on like Boba Samurai. Fett's helmet, Samurai. It's like we need to take this and move it back four thousand years, make it look a little bit more feudal, make it look a little but, bit more simple. You know, Star Wars is one of those places where technology just never really changes. Like it, it's like they hit this side of technology, yeah. even in Kotor, they hit the spot. But they, even where you get in the written the original trilogy and everywhere else, like it never moves forward in Star Wars. Like they just once they get there, they stay there. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like Dune that way, where it's just like it's it is what it is. Um, but they find different ways of doing it. Like later on in the game, like what you're trying to get to is basically a different version of the Death Star. It's just like a super weapon, yeah. but it's but it's it's differently told, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was Death so... Star cannon on every ship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so much of this game is based on um, the original trilogy and like particularly a new hope but just making it look the same like people always say like the force awakens is a remake <laughs> nice the republic is basically a remake as well like when you get down to it it's still it's still we've got to like get all of our friends together and work together to destroy this giant machine that the sith built that's, i think that's the, more of the fact that it's like an art like an rpg versus yeah. the fact that it because i mean you have to do the hero's journey but i think the hero's journey in itself has done so much better in the game well, because yeah. it's, it, it puts obviously the, the twist that we'll talk about later on it but it's <laughs> well, but so I, I, think, I think that's why i like it so much is that it, it is yeah. a new hope but it goes into so much more depth and it 
it takes the aspects of a new hope and expands them in so many different ways of even just like even just like arguing with your like with the jedi masters is expanded into almost a whole philosophy <laughs> that exists yeah. now and that's probably so i wasn't like believe it or not Stuart, i was not into star wars for a long time like oh, i no. watched i know <laughs> I, <laughs> I watched the prequels and i was just like yeah i like the phantom menace didn't realize it was part of a bigger thing this was the game this game got me into star wars and i liked how much there <laughs> it was talking about like the code and like their sort of like um system because the only mm. time you ever really see it is in the prequels and it's and you know qui-gon goes against it anakin destroys it and the games do so much of a better job of establishing like the hierarchy mm. the philosophy behind it it's i think it's like fantastic yeah it does both games do a fantastic job of if like depending on how you play them both jobs do uh, both games do a fantastic job of saying here's the jedi way and here's why it's wrong <laughs> and here's why it's so wrong yeah, yeah. the jedi it's just I, I hate to tell everybody this but uh the jedi are dumb <laughs> the jedi suck the jedi aren't the good guys either and if you like a new hope and you're like oh no or like like empire strikes back and you're like oh no like like yoda's so cool though he's great yoda was wrong in a, in empire strikes back yoda tells luke not to go help his friends and the whole point of the, the original trilogy is that friends are good <laughs> friends save you <laughs> the only and, way and, luke wins and beats the empire is because he has the love of his friends <laughs> i think the only person in the in the movies that truly understood like the force and like the way it was supposed to be was qui-gon Jin. oh yeah i absolutely. mean that's more based on like sort of his like um his legends backstory, but um, well, he was one of it ended well, uh, really well for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, depending on whether or not you watch the Clone Wars, it ended very well for him. Yeah. Uh, he's, he, he, he resembles very much of one of the companions you get in this game, who yes. is probably my favorite. Oh, absolutely. Jolie. Uh, Jolie. Jolie Bindo. Yeah. Absolutely amazing man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember uh, this game came out years before Revenge of the Sith. And, uh, I remember Revenge of the Sith when everyone's like, only a Sith deals in absolutes. And everyone was like, but that's an absolute, Obi. This game said that way ahead of time. Like, yeah. Jolie Bindo has a, like a line in the game that's like, like Bastos bitching at him. And he's like, I don't see in absolutes like you. I'm not. Well, I think he, it's something like, I don't see in black and white. Like I see in shades of gray, which is cool because he's like known as the gray Jedi. Yeah. Everyone's like, Qui-Gon Jinn was the first gray Jedi. And it's like, yeah, but Jolie Bindo was like... <laughs> The first gray Jedi. <laughs> and he was funnier. He's so yeah. funny this game. <laughs> oh god, he's great. Yeah, this this game is just it everything everything I love about this game is just made in the character interactions. I was so impressed by it when I I think I played it in like a couple years after it came out because I played the second game first actually. Oh wow, but, really? Yeah, but even still I was so impressed by the first one because just both of them feel like living worlds every like the way that you'll be walking and suddenly your characters will or your companions will start like arguing with each other and you have to be like hey <laughs> shut the fuck up we're trying to like we're trying to fight the sith here well i mean that's like that's the rpg elements of this game like at first wait, like when i first played this and even to today i wasn't completely like on board with the fighting system right away because it's not it's turn-based but it doesn't look like turn-based there's no attack item magic is just you kind of have a little wheel you can pick if you want to do attack a powered attack a critical strike or you want to throw a grenade use an item and then it kind of just depending on what you click it siphons through while your allies are all auto auto attacking or auto doing well, you, whatever you well, tell you can, them to. You, you control those you can yeah you can you control them yeah i did not it was everything was auto <laughs> Uh, I, played, but I, mostly, I mostly let the companions do what they will i'll change their script sometimes like i basil always starts in default i always change it to jedi support i didn't do anything i just let the game completely <laughs> play a default um i mean you can do it that way it's it's like i said this game is meant for multiple playthroughs really this game is meant for six playthroughs if you want to like get all the endings there's uh um, play light dark and then the romance options right yeah, and then there is neutral endings to this game as well, which are kind of the canon, I think. Um, it depends, because it's... I I, th I think the neutral endings are the canon, but it's hard to say, because after... No, I, the canon is Revan returns to the light with Bastila. Uh, and the neutral ending, he, you can end up with Bastila as well. <laughs> I uh, was thinking that. <laughs> spoilers it's okay we didn't get to the one spoiler i don't want to say so we kind of just did but okay yeah, <laughs> not exactly but we yeah, did so yeah but let's um oh. let's actually since we're <laughs> since we're already fix, 40 fix minutes in 
let's uh let's get into the beginning of this game because it's such a strong opening <laughs> well first you as you pick your character we were kind of saying before and then you we wake up in a bed with a, uh, a character i know riley likes i don't care for you wake up with karth and the no, ship no, no, attack. no it's trask olgo you wake Come up on, with Mike. trask olgo oh all right yeah. karth is also, later trask all died. Don't people don't out there saying justice for bob justice for barb fuck <laughs> you justice for trask <laughs> dude that guy's sacrifices himself for you like he and he like he's your tutorial basically yeah and he doesn't know you <laughs> i forgot about him i completely forgot he existed in this game in my head i i even could picture you waking up talking to karth no you wake <laughs> up and to be fair you wake up and uh you hear from karth pretty quickly because he tells yeah. you over, like the the com the com chat but yeah trask is immediately like you gotta get up the sith are attacking here are your clothes. Let's go. Yeah. Everyone's dead. How are you still asleep? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's your clothes. Here's how you open a door. Here's how you switch characters. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's the Sith. Quick, use me to shoot them. <laughs> oh, yeah, because your character is so worthless in the beginning of that game that Trask oh, God, does all yeah. of the work. It's hard. Yeah, you are, um, you're pretty much like complete shit for all of Terrace <sighs> and most of Dantooine. And then by the time you get to like the first planet you start becoming so overpowered that nobody can stop you <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's but it, it feels so good uh because you just you have to slum it out for so long as just a like a piece of shit right like you're not even a jedi this game doesn't even start with you being a jedi you, you start as like either like we said a, either a random soldier or scout or smuggler you're just some guy yeah and trask even points out how like you're exceptional like you know all these languages like i'm confused but let's go and it's like yeah okay thanks for that wanna... exposition how do you, <laughs> you know how to speak twi'lek <laughs> how you want to play too like you can either use swords or you can use guns i just use yes. swords and lightsabers because Which... i've never played through with ranged like, i have I've never played, done. uh i've played through two with ranged i haven't played the first one with ranged i know in two ranged is actually like it's actually an option um up until like the very very end of the game you can start getting your ass kicked a little bit especially by scion um in that game <laughs> but for the most part you can play this game ranged if you really wanted to you can play as a ranged like jedi support and it's not bad it's uh it's an option um it's a I, it, it's odd it is something it's, that can be done it's a I star wars game ranged. where you can choose not to Ever. use a lightsaber if you don't want to yeah like who uh, well uh, we have a friend uh named christian who i think always does ranged attacks yeah but <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> but was on the show once Oh, yeah, he nice. actually, yeah, he was. Uh, long, Pac-Man long World. time ago. He was on arguably our. Uh, he was on our second most popular episode. Pac-Man World. Yeah, somehow. Um, <laughs> somehow that's our second most popular episode. I don't understand it. Nope. I, I don't get it at all. But yeah, you can. Uh, you can actually later in the game get some really good swords and choose not to use a lightsaber too. You can just use like a a regular old metal sword. What's the fun uh, man, that? Well, Yeah, like once you customize your lightsaber, like you get attached to it. Yeah, yeah, the lightsaber becomes a part of you. It just it works. It works. It's like it's like being a Jedi. <laughs> yeah, this game does something that um the second one doesn't really do where you actually get to build your own lightsaber. Like that's kind of the one of the starting missions is like when you finally become a Jedi, they're like, Oh yeah, go out and find your crystal and find all these parts and put it together and it goes to like a little animation, which is like just something I want in every video game. Like I, I know people have issues with Fallen Order, but I get to customize my own lightsaber in it, so it's the best game ever made in my mind. <laughs> it's yeah. there's a really cool animation in the Old Republic, um, the MMO, yeah. where it like it does everything together. I think it's only if you're on the light side initially, but yeah. the animation where you like use the Force to put it together is amazing. Yeah, you see all the pieces like pop in. It's like that. All yeah. that's just all I want in life is to be able to do that. <laughs> I don't care. Like the world could go. It could be the apocalypse. If I get to build my own lightsaber with the forest, fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> I will yeah, sacrifice so you... as many lives as I has to as I have to. So I like when this game drops you off, like they do a good job of kind of like telling you a little bit of what's happening. They teach the controls and they, they do it a decent way where you go through different doors on this ship and you're fighting the Sith soldiers. And I like it. <laughs> I do like how the Sith are like a organization, an empire, not just like a religion like it is in yeah. the regular yeah. Star Wars canon. Yeah, it's um, it kind of defines and breaks the rule at the same time of the rule of two, because that was that actually that was way to... later, though. Mm, well, not really. <laughs> um, Darth Bane 
instituted it before he wrote the rule of two before, before Revan and Revan oh, established a essentially a system based on the rule of two of oh you can have all of these apprentices out there he's like but only two of you are basically important yeah there's there's neophytes and the but rule also, of the Sith is that there's a master who knows everything and he chooses who to give that knowledge to but most of these yeah. Sith are just regular nobodies that just join and want to fight and be Sith like I mean you have yes. as you see throughout the game you have just random idiots that are like just put on a uniform you're a sith you're an asshole sign up here's a here's a gun yeah it's like, um, they're not they're because not, that after you know, you, Jedi type. spoiler alert traska sacrificed himself to save you he runs into yeah. a room with, Darth, with a, a dark jedi he's like get out of here and you're like it's... you're just a guy what are you gonna do and he's like i'm trask motherfucking olgo get the fuck <laughs> off my you. ship <laughs> and then there's there's a weird like dialogue option where it goes like trask shut this door to save you keep going or something yeah. like that <laughs> Yeah, they really want you to remember Trask, and I really did. <laughs> I didn't I did remember too. anything about him. <laughs> I'd be great. It'd be great if at the end of the game, like as as you finally like beat the game, if you just have like a little picture of Trask that you, for some reason, just, like a little you wallet picture. <laughs> you were, we were oh my god, they were roommates. <laughs> 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 it's just i want like <laughs> that might be uh oh yeah i should bring this up i was like that might be my next valentine's day card to riley every year we should mention this because riley and i both love knights of the old republic so much every year i make her a personal uh knights of the old republic themed valentine's day card yep yep, yep. <laughs> and it's like my favorite time of year <laughs> And they're always great like <laughs> we'll talk about it later because i don't want to spoil uh one of the character stories but my favorite one is karth oh, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the image for karth is so perfect too it is <laughs> my favorite is uh i think my favorite is it's either karth or i was really happy with rook lamar's last time because rook lamar's ah, such an so asshole <laughs> I hear you're looking for a uh, massive dick. Well, you won't find what you're looking for here. <laughs> <laughs> this is a picture of Rook disappointed, his default stance. I have no idea what you're talking about. Rook That's is the okay. bald Jedi Master who just hates everything. <laughs> oh, Absolutely okay. everything. Like, constantly complains. <laughs> it's just always, he's always against you. Constantly. Just, <laughs> I hate him so I mean, much. It is interesting how, like, in the first level, like, you're watching people die and you're fighting these Sith. Oh, yeah. And it, it's cool. And also, one thing. Battle. Like about the yeah, which is a good way to start a game, and also like the enemies, they'll switch out what they're using. Like they'll, if you're not nearby, yeah. they'll shoot at you, mm -hmm. and as you run towards them, because I only use melee weapons, they'll switch to melee weapons and then yes. fight you that way, which is it's cool. Yeah, they're usually much know. weaker with the melee rep or the Sith are on uh whatever that ship is called. Okay, what was that ship called? It was Ender's Fire. Uh, Ender's Fire. Yeah, yeah. Fire. Nice. I almost called it the Harbinger. The Harbinger is the ship from the second right. game. That's the next game. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. One thing that bothers me about that opening level, and it's how I play the entire game, is that um I don't know if you know this, Mike, but if you level up, it automatically heals you. Yes. And you once you get to the bridge and you get through everything, it forces you to level up. And I like refuse to use med packs and will <laughs> wait until I'm about to die until I like yep. level up. And it's like the only time in the game that it does that where it's like, you need to level up before you can move forward. I'm like, no, I fuck no, I don't. Like, let me go. <laughs> I, uh, well, I didn't know that. Yeah. I would just level up the moment it popped in there, I'd just do it. Yeah, no, I, I, I was about to die. I always say it. I say it in every game that that has that. Like Skyrim does that, and I do that in Skyrim constantly. Where I like, I'm like, oh, it's time to level up. Time to go fight a dragon. <laughs> it's really annoying though because like it makes you super under. Well, I this is. I mean, it's. I did this to my. I do this to myself, but it makes you <laughs> super under leveled when you get to the next planet. Mm -hmm. That it's almost impossible. Yeah, but you always have that just healing option with you. Yeah, <laughs> but then you have to do it like three times in a row and you're like, damn, yeah. I just wasted this. I tried to use it for like for battles, but then once I get out of a battle, I'll just use it anyway because I got to get my demolitions up because on terrorists, there's a shitload of uh, uh, mines that you can works. only get if you have high demolitions. And like I can get these and sell these and just make a bunch of credits immediately. And I one could of the other permission, but I don't want to. And it doesn't, it's not an issue until later, but if you do it that way, which I've like, done every single time um you can't advance the like the companion stories mm -hmm. you have to you have to be leveled up it doesn't matter if they're leveled up but if you don't if you're not a high enough level even though you've talked to them and i would i would do that just to make sure i was like far enough with whoever character story was on that planet we were on yeah i tried to figure out the mechanics for how this game's 
like loyalty system works and uh, it's very complicated it's like you have to not only do you have to continuously talk to your companions but you have to be getting stronger because that kind of ties into the plot of the game too yeah um, which is it's masterfully done in both Night Zero Republic and Night Zero Republic 2 is they tie in the game mechanics to how the story evolves and works and it's just it's like once you realize what's happening you're like oh my fucking god <laughs> like yeah, this game does and, so much more than i thought it did <laughs> and their alignment it's more prevalent in the um in the first one but their alignment also adjusts with yours like you yes. it's as if you're high enough like um they call it influence in the second game but if you've talked to them enough if you make bad decisions their alignment will get more red yeah. or if you make light side decisions they'll go up and they're like uh they're like character model will actually change too which is like great was crazy at the time yeah like seeing like if you're uh, dark like karth gets like more and more like withered and shit it's like oh my yeah, god very it's like I'm, I'm affecting people i think bastila only her only real change is that she starts wearing like a black outfit instead of a, a yellow one she also gets like super super pale that's true if yeah. I remember. my favorite is in the second game if you play dark you have a uh a zavrak or not zavrak a um an iridonian uh mm -hmm. companion who starts to look like darth maul a little yeah yeah yeah. it's like tattoos and stuff it's like where where are you, how are you finding what? the time for this yeah. <laughs> probably when you leave him back on the ship yeah he's just on the ship <laughs> tattooing his face he's got this little like um he's got this little remote droid with him this remote droid is just holding a little tattoo gun well it's still remote <laughs> uh, i mean there's no i, I can kind of see that i i didn't know that because i only played this game light side so i didn't yes. realize if the character nice. can change yeah, I tried. Uh, I yeah, spoilers. I was trying not spoilers, but just behind the scenes. I was trying to go more neutral because um, I was I was trying to get that neutral ending that I've seen a thousand times because I've watched the ending of this game a thousand times on YouTube. That neutral ending, but I've never actually gotten it because it's so it's so particular. You have to like be true neutral, and you have to do things with companions a very specific way, and you get the true neutral ending. But I almost always like I feel bad in these games going dark side. I have to go light side. I've played this game probably over 30 times. Maybe not completed it every single time. I've never done the dark side. The it's... furthest I've ever done has been gr like gray. And I, <laughs> I like I can't be me to characters in video games. I've done it, I think, twice dark side. And I felt terrible both times <laughs> because you actively are like killing people that like don't deserve it. I'm like, no, I yeah, did do a couple dark side thing. I mean, this is way later, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> there is a part where there's a guy in a locker and I couldn't persuade him to come out. Then the option came, stick the lightsaber through the door. So I'm like, let's see what this does. And <laughs> oh, you it, killed him. I was oh, no. like, you know what? It was worth it. He was pissing me off when we came out of that locker. You know what uh, really changes the game is if you do a dark, a full dark side run, you could potentially end the game with over half your companions dead. Yep. Yep, you could potentially kill uh, four companions and then you don't kill... even get one of them. You kill them before it's even an option. To yeah, end. yeah. So you could end the game with I think what three living companions, and I think we'll get... one of them abandons you. We'll get yeah. to that. I'm very curious. I don't know. I know partly what you're talking about, but not completely. Yeah, you. Yeah, you were messaging us. I think when you got to the part where you could have killed them if you were dark side. <laughs> yeah, I well, I knew it was in this game because I. I've heard about it before and I couldn't and I thought maybe that if I was light side I have to fight some of the dark characters. I couldn't remember how the game goes, so it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it's uh the like the alignment and influence, it's it's not like a crazy deep system, but it's built in just the right way that it feels like everything you do really matters. Like just even though uh, after you get off the Indar Spire, uh, you get into a you meet Karth. He's on the ship. You get into a uh, I don't know why the Indar Spire is over Terrace. I don't think I don't know if they ever explain that really. But um, you get to why is he pod. still on the ship? Why well, does he just leave? Because he's a hero and he's trying to make sure everybody gets yeah. off. He, it didn't Karth, go so well for the other guy. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, you know, but he works well for you. Are, <laughs> yeah, some people are bigger <laughs> heroes. Okay, you know Trask is. <laughs> Like the MVP. This, there's a part in the MMO where you can come, you can go to a planet, and there's like, um, there's like hologram statues of like the Revan kiss of like Revan and Bastila and like M Mission Veo. It's like these are the saviors of the Republic, and I always wanted there to be a little one of Trask in the corner. It's like none Dude. of this would have been possible <laughs> without absolute hero. Brave but Karth sacrifice. doesn't know anything special about you. To Karth, you're just this random idiot on no. the ship. Trask, I, I, uh... I might have I might have misspoke because I think Karth is the one because when you get to Terrace like so to jump ahead like you take the escape pod with Karth and you wake up after he's pulled you out and he goes 
like he's the one that tells you that you're exceptional the saying that you know all these languages but he doesn't get why you were on the ship in the first place and why you yeah. survived karth is um karth has issues <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. uh yeah he he like kind of he kind of knows that you're important he doesn't know why um he just knows that like like they make a big point to say uh he's like i don't know like why were you on this ship like the jedi requested you specifically i don't understand yeah. why you were on the ship Which... and Cards whole story is that he doesn't trust anything. <laughs> the Jedi way. Don't tell anybody. Just keep it to yourself. Because that's what the yes. Jedi do forever. I mean, every time you see Jedi, they're always keeping things to themselves. It don't even work out so well. Uh, yeah. It, uh, yeah. It turns out the Jedi always fail because they always go back to the same old stringent code that never works out for them. Yeah, like make somebody, uh, put somebody on the console and not make him a Jedi Master. I mean, you know, it doesn't work out so well. <laughs> it's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> this is worse than sand. <laughs> so. I'm going to rewatch those movies after I watch all the Clone Wars and, and see if I like them anymore, but I, I don't know. It, it's to, uh, to ruin my credibility in anything I know about Star Wars, I, like, with the exception of Attack of the Clones, I don't hate the prequels. No, they're fine. Um, First one's great. I think yeah, I like. There's, I, I there's no the first, second movie, unfortunately. Yeah. They just skip number two and write to three. But that's fine. Two, uh, one is better on rewatch. I think when it came out, a lot of people were like disappointed. Yeah, yeah, and part of that was just that I love Star Wars, but the Star Wars fandom is the worst group of people on the planet. Um, oh, one hundred percent. I don't I even I would... like telling people how into Star Wars I am. Yeah, same. I like if if I see somebody with a Star Wars shirt, I'll be like, oh, cool, sure. And they'll be like, do you want to talk about it? I'm like, no, no, I do not. I just feel like <laughs> this was a mistake. I should have known not to talk to you. But yeah, I, I think um, I think one, like rewatching it, it's way better than people give it credit for. The pod racing is really fun. The Darth Maul fight is awesome. Darth Maul is just a... With Darth Maul, I, I don't care what anyone it. says... When Darth Maul lights up his fucking lightsaber and then lights the other blade. The other side. <laughs> like, that blew my fucking mind. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, Star Wars has changed forever. <laughs> I kicked myself that I could have met him. He was, oh. at, he was at Galaxy what, Con, and I could have, but I didn't. They parked? Yeah. I didn't yeah, was there, right no. when you and I went to Galaxy Con, Stuart? No. Because if he was, um, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna kill somebody. <laughs> no, we thought that I think there was like a, a rumor that like Warwick Davis was going, but he canceled. I wanna say that was like the Star Wars person that would have been there. Um uh, but everyone's met with Warwick Davis. <laughs> and I got to meet the Red Power Ranger, so it was all and, good. Yeah, which I, I totally forgot which Power Ranger he was. This is, a, <gasps> this is a side note for just like off the podcast, but I've been i me and Riley have both been playing Animal Crossing and I've been sending her green Power Ranger gear, thinking that it was the Ranger. <laughs> that we met <laughs> so that's why you've got like all the red the green power ranger stuff oh my god is that what that's for you can't okay because yeah. you've said that to me and i like I, I was putting it on and i was like i cool thanks buddy yeah, like i forgot which power ranger he was <laughs> oh my god i'm not a tommy i'm totally more of a jason he even <laughs> looks like karth yeah but to get to get back that's a good segue back to karth oh uh, <laughs> karth sucks uh i like no, karth, no, like karth lot. but karth is like immediately he he sucks at first and then you realize that everything he says is right and you agree with him completely where yeah. he's like uh he's like who are you like why would they request you on the end our spire like what what is your connection to the jedi i don't understand and like don't the worry. entire time you're he, like I'm he's just literally a guy. <laughs> yeah and then he's literally just like okay nice to meet you now let's go find basila and it's like it's pushing the game forward but it's also just like cool nice to meet you and then he doesn't open up until it gives you a prompt saying like something yeah. is bothering Karth, and then you talk to him, he's like, I don't want to talk about it. And it's like, <laughs> cool, okay, buddy, thanks. Yeah, awesome, Karth. I mean, it I makes sense. Too. There's a that... point where you're like, is something wrong? And I always wanted Karth to say, like, yes, we're crash-landed on a Sith planet, Bastila is gone, everyone's dead, I have you, and I don't know who you are. Like, I just want him to have a breakdown in the middle of the street. It's just like, yes, everything, literally everything is wrong. This could not get worse. Oh, the but, best I mean, part Bast is the... Oh, go ahead. Okay, like Bastila plays such a big part of this. Like Bastila was the reason they attacked the ship yes. you're on is because Bastila is on the ship, and that was well, like the whole just... reason. That battle uh, meditation. Yeah, yeah. Which you... you get in the second game and is the most worthless power in the yes. entire world. Yeah, it's a. Uh... I, I always in the second game I always just like get Kraya to get it. I'm like I just stay over there. Like when I have to bring you with Whatever. me, I will. <laughs> but yeah, it's Bastila is like main claim to fame she's a she's not a jedi master she's a jedi knight at this point i believe right yeah no, she's a padawan she's not a uh, padawan. they call a her a padawan 
in the in Dantooine. Um, I think she's made a knight after you leave Dantooine. I think Mike's right. Yes, 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 yes. I, right. I, I saw that. I'm like, okay, something's wrong here. Why are you letting a Padawan? First thing, there's no master. Second thing, what the hell? This Padawan is like winning the war for you. Like, I don't understand. It's this the Padawan Jedi. That's what helps they you do. kill. No. The Jedi are like, hey, hey take, take literal child. Here's a lightsaber. Go fight this Sith Lord who's probably going to kill you. Well, I mean, she's, she's, so you find out later that she was like exceptionally like special and stuff yes. like that. And she has in that, that power that she has, that battle meditation is so like unique and so influential. That's, that's why she gets like pushed up so fast. And even she's just like, I'm not ready for this. Like I wasn't prepared. Like I'm confused and. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think battle meditation is probably one of the weaknesses of the game because it's such a... It's a bad power, but when you... I like that it's not a ridiculous power. I like that it's not Bastil is the most important Jedi because she can force push a ship into a planet. It's She has the power to essentially <laughs> just... Sky. Yeah. She can, uh, just, she's not star killers. She's not pulling TIE fighters and crashing them into <laughs> each other. It wasn't she's a got TIE this fighter. power that's It was like, a star destroyer. Oh yeah, it's something good. <laughs> But yeah, she can. Um, she has battle meditation, which basically means she meditates during battle, and she can like, uh, kind of like slightly influence the other of individuals. It's not. Sl it's not slightly. She can convince the entire like armadas to basically like give up. Yeah, it's like a it's like a moralizing demoralizing effect where she can like okay, we're like we need you to go moralize these republic troops that are fighting the Sith, or you need to go like influence them that they're. They, that the Sith suck and they need to give up. Yeah, <laughs> and that ties into the like that ties into like kind of the overall story of the Jedi in this game too of being able to manipulate people. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole reason like what makes her so important, and that, I mean that plays such a big part in this game because like a yes. little bit of background you're given around this point is that Basila used her meditation and was fighting Revan. And then Malik fired on the ship that they were in to kill Mal, right. to kill Revan and her. Wasn't that yes. it? Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he thought he was going to take out. He really wanted to kill Revan. He didn't give a shit about Basila. But it was both of their enemies on the same yeah. ship. Yeah. Which is he, the uh, Sith way. If you if you can kill your master, yes. you kill your master. Yeah, that's a, that's a celebrated part of Sith culture is that fortune favors the strong. <laughs> so if you can kill your master... Is, is, there's no crime against murder or attempted murder. It's uh, if you can do it, you can do it, and you deserve to be where you are. <laughs> uh, and yeah, the, the Jedi are like the exact opposite, where they're like pacifists that want to stay out of everything, and they're they, they they take it to the extreme of like the Jedi being based on Buddhism in this game, and the Sith being based to on like the this, extreme. Yeah, where they're like, we we are going to remove ourselves from society. We're going to cut ourselves off from the world and all connection. And it's all about just like inner peace. And it's like, yeah, but that doesn't always fucking work. <laughs> the fact that they, like the whole idea, we talked about the Mandalorian Wars earlier and how they they didn't want to get involved. It was just like mm. your entire society is being murdered by like yes mercenaries at yeah. some point. Or and, and then, yeah, and they're just like, it's not our business. Yeah, you can figure it out. And they're everybody's just like, no, they can't. <laughs> they're yeah, the Mandalorians are like unstoppably dominating worlds conquering them enslaving the populations and the republic is losing so badly <laughs> and the jedi are like eh, like yeah we're fine <laughs> they're not attacking dance i mean <laughs> oh but mike yeah. what did you so the next planet that you get to after you get off the endor spar you like crash land on a planet that's basically like a giant city where the yes. different levels like the higher up you are is the better off you are and you're kind of like in the top but really more in the middle um it's How did you feel thing. about Terrace? You mean Midgar? Oh, I mean, sorry, you mean Coruscant? I was, to say, it's, I was about to say, it's a bit like the Sith version of Coruscant. <laughs> um, it kind of, or the... It's both. Yeah, yeah. But no, I, I, that's part of the game where I'm not as fond of it, because like, as we were kind of, we brought up a little bit earlier, is that <laughs> it's hard. Like, you are not very strong at first. I, I, no. I did a bunch of things. I was exploring around, running around the apartment building, kind of fighting whoever I could fight. And I felt very weak. I didn't have a lot of credits. I'm always like, I'm not so sure how this is going to work. And I'm not sure I can do this. And it's definitely a different take than what I was expecting, especially early it's, on. It's yeah. a slog. Like, it's, 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 it's Terrace. 
I love the idea of it, but just like I, I was, t- I was texting Stuart yesterday, and I was just like, I have to speed run this. Like, I don't even care if I get the experience. I just need to get off this planet. Yeah, it's a bit like um, people complain about like the hinterlands and Dragon Age Inquisition, and it's a bit of the same thing where it's like there's yeah. just, it's just so much to do so early on, where I mean like. I'm trying to think, uh, Riley. We we both complained about Paraga Station and and Nice oh, Home too, but that but like so by comparison, shorter. yeah, by comparison, that's like three things. Terrace is okay. You got to get out. You don't know where you are, where Basil is, or what's going on. You just need to find information. And so the first part's just finding information, and then it's um, you have to get from the upper city to the middle city, and then you have to get to the lower city, city. And or just, the under city. To, yeah, and you have to do so much just to get to the under city, and that's like the first third way mark like yeah after that you gotta get like you gotta go get mission you gotta go save zalvar you gotta get the davix estate and it's like jesus oh, i just want to leave the, the, the swoop fight game thing is the most pointless plot in the entire game oh, like God. it's not even fun like it's it... the only <laughs> you have to fight the fucking rat ghouls <laughs> i mean oh, I, don't, you... <laughs> I don't want to talk about the rat ghouls <laughs> the rat ghouls are awful <laughs> oh, the town is interesting like the idea how it starts off how you see a town a planet except you know in normal star wars lore one city equals planet and yes. the sith have taken <laughs> i don't know why they do this but the sith have taken Every over planet is one yes. environment <laughs> i watched way too much star wars in the last since disney plus came out this year i watched all the rebels i watched all the clone wars i watched all the movies <laughs> Yes. One planet. One city, one planet, period. There is no, there's just this one city on an entire planet. It's, it's not even one city, it's one environment. So if a, if a planet is like, it's if a planet is like Dagobah, like, they're, okay, you get to Dagobah and part of it's just swamp. And so in Star Wars logic, the entire planet is swamp. It, it like, it'd be like if you landed on Earth in New York City and you were like, well, the entire planet must look like this. Like, Or if you landed in like Tunisia and everything's sand. Like, it's... Yeah, and that's Tatooine. <laughs> It is, yeah. yeah everything's, <laughs> but, everything's sand and Tatooine. Everything is forest and Kashyyyk. And, and there's, like, very few... I think the MMO is, like, one of the only games that lets you travel, over like, across planets. And it's like, oh, like, yeah, you were in the city, and now you're outside the city. Telos the is kind of like that in the second game. Yeah, well, Telos, you're but, in a floating only, city. <laughs> yeah, and the entire ground is, like, burned. But. Yeah, the whole ground is... Which I, I always thought Telos and Terrace were the same, Terrace were the same planet for, like, the longest time. I well, thought that Terrace was a uh, got to about Telos. Telos. Oh, I you know we talked about this like eight years ago. I remember you. Yeah, we argued over this because <laughs> yeah, we you were the one to tell me that they were different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought Telos was just Terrace because Telos was like all destroyed. And spoiler alerts: Terrace don't make it out of this unscathed. <laughs> but Terrace does it, is it Terrace or Tannis? Terrace. 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 You, you, you misspelled it earlier. Yeah. yeah, that's that's not unusual. Welcome Tannis to Game, is the my character in Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, okay. But the planet I like I besides like the annoying parts, it's kinda cool how you have an apartment building you're hiding in, you have these crash escape pods that are in the city, you have the yeah. cyst looking for you. Like there's early on, right when you're in the apartment building, you have some some of the the natives come and they help you know and they help you get, after you get into a fight with the sith guards they help you hide the bodies which then plays a part a little bit later and not i like the how the um i mean not only the natives that, it, but they're it, it, they're aliens yeah um, i mean by I, star wars standards they're alien they're like duros they're uh i think they're both duros and there's like Thorians there walking the, the blue Twilight. face big head bald people in star wars duros yeah <laughs> uh um, yeah cad bane and uh Gre- not greedo greedo's already in uh, oh my god how are you Greedo and Cad Bane look nothing like each like themselves. No, it's not Greedo I'm thinking of. There's another bounty hunter that's a Duros later. That's uh, I just... forgot that Cad Bane is a Duros. Yeah, he doesn't look like one, but he is. No, he, his That's head right. isn't as fat. I mean, my first, the first time yeah. you ever see a Duros in Star Wars is in New Hope in the in the tattoo in Tatooine Cantina. Yeah, he looks nothing like a Duros. Uh, it's kind of odd, but and this yeah, is also like, like the aliens are there and the Sith are fighting them, and you realize very quickly that there's like there's a hierarchy even amongst the upper city where like. They, the Sith have taken over, and the aliens are being pushed out. It's actually really cool how how much there was like I, I guess the best way to put it is like the racist sort of like way that they look down on anyone that's not like human looking. And you even get that guy that is like preaching to people, saying that oh, the yeah. aliens ruin the planet. And it's like you are on a well, they literally on a quarantine by the Sith. Like, where do you want them to go? Like, yeah, they don't want them to exist. That's the whole idea of like the yeah. Sith is that they. Even though they took over this planet, they hate the people here because they're not like them. Which well, it's not even just the political. Sith; it's like Terrace it's itself any, is. Yeah, like Terrace is incredibly sort of like they're segregated as hell. Like they're very yeah. Terrace is a very like uh, hierarchy caste system. Uh, yeah, which is planet. Uh, it's 
it's actually a really cool thing. So like we talked a little bit how there were different levels. When you get when you finally make it to the undercity, you meet um like people at the elevator that try to like con you out of like credits or whatever. But then you meet, I don't remember what her name is, but you meet a girl that is like, Yeah, my parents were born here because Jelena. they were <laughs> Jelena, yeah. And like my parents were criminals and that's why I'm stuck down here. And it's like and you didn't even do anything wrong. Yeah, like, you just got exiled. Like your your whole entire bloodline was essentially exiled to the other city. I like there's a little North Korea for you. There's a little hint there that is in the game that takes place. That's that's very that has disturbing implications to it. Where on the on terrace, there's you can do like a bounty hunter sub quest where you can find like all these bounties across terrace, which takes forever, but I always do it because I have to 100 percent everything. Oh, you know, some of you those are are dark side. Yeah, do you uh, kill Dia? No, no, I always I get hold stress? into uh I get hold to remove the bounty on her. So I never get the bounty okay. on her, but I get the light side points in the experience. Yes. I help Matrix uh escape and I, I tell the bounty head that he's dead. But there's one named Severina, I think her name is. And she is a she was an assassin, um, quote unquote the most dangerous assassin on terrorists or whatever, that was hired to take out a family. And after she took out the family, a bounty was placed on her, and you can attack her. And you find out through her backstory that she was maybe hired by this other rich, powerful family on Terrace to take out the former family, and they were the one who put the bounty on her. And that family is named is Organa. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? I don't yeah. think I've ever done that. It's got some like disturbing implications that the Organas are from Terrace in this really strict caste system. That that like uh, like it has no. It's been four thousand years, so it has no ties to Leia, but it does kind of paint their family like a different light and almost make her more impressive. Of like, yeah, your whole family was, you know, or the the Bale stuff. family at least was like very very shady. And like they had to overcome that to be good people, because okay. uh, Bale's a great. Uh, who plays Bale? Is it Jimmy Smith? Awesome. Bale Organa. I, I, I can picture him, but I can't. Space. Yeah. He was the president. He was the final president in the West Wing. That's all I remember about him. <laughs> I think it's Jimmy Smith. Well, Terrace is. I, I feel like Terrace is probably one of the longer planets in this game, or maybe just because I was running back and forth a lot because I didn't really know what I was doing at first. It like might it, be the longest. Because you have uh, like, one, three planets in one. Yeah, it's Manon is long as hell. Oh, yeah. and Manon is so boring. <laughs> yeah, and you you have to go back to Dantooine a couple of times, but Dantooine's not really that long. Corbin's not really that I, I, A lot of people say Corbin is long, but it's really not that long. No, it's pretty quick. It's a very short plan. Long if you do it early in the game, because everything is so is leveled so much higher than you are. I yeah, Corbin in, in, in both games, Corbin is meant to be the ending planet. And yeah. I think in Knights of the Old Republic 2, it's like one of the first ones I go to. <laughs> I'm not surprised. But like other thing about Terrors that we kind of have jumped up about, is, like the city is like tiered and you start out on the top layer and you kind of do some things, you get some mm. missions and you can't even go down to the second layer until you get a uh, Sith uniform. And I, I like love, it. That's what I love how you do this. <laughs> and like you can do it different ways. Like I think you can also like steal it from somebody or you can go to a party. They all get drunk at the party or you drug them. I yeah. can't remember. Yeah. I do that every time. All you have to you do steal is be nice to one lady you have to be nice to one sith the, soldier the lady you meet in the cantina yeah but, and you get you know, free sith armor out of it for being a guy who just watched a season of one tree hill i mean that sounds about accurate you just invite someone <laughs> to a party you're nice to them they invite you to the house party where they know you're not yeah it's just, i'm sure to watching uh one tree hill this last last week I'm sorry. I, I was rewatching all of the clothes you know, I'm on season six now. It's not bad. My wife, my wife wanted to watch it. She's like, "Oh, here." I'll, she meant to show me one episode. I'm like, and then all of a sudden I started getting into it. She's like, "This is not my plan. I just wanted to watch it without you." And quickly and burnt through it. I'm like, "Is this is that it? This is not bad." I would like to point out that <laughs> um, I there's another family line that exists in this game that is uh exactly. I have questions about because <laughs> I always argued that Jango Fett is a Mandalorian. Jango Fett and Boba Fett are Mandalorians, and everyone always tells me, no, they're not. They just dress like Mandalorians. But there's there's two things that are different sides of the arguments that work for me. In this game, there's a Mandalorian named Cassus Fett, who might be the same bloodline, but also Mandalorian isn't a bloodline or a family. It's, it's like a creed or it's whatever. Creed. It's, it's, creed. it's clans. Like, anybody can be a Mandalorian. So isn't just by wearing the armor and following the creed, doesn't that make Jango Fett a Mandalorian? 
I just don't get why people like Django Fett so much that I'm gonna refuse to believe your theory. Um, I don't like Django Fett. I like Boba Fett at least in. The I don't like either one. I think they're both just sort of just. It, I don't get why people got so like like when the movies came, the original trilogy came out, while people got so excited for Boba Fett because I was like, okay, he looks cool. He does absolutely nothing. Yeah, I don't get that either because people people did the same thing for like Captain Phasma. I'm like, she hasn't said anything yet. Like. And she it's, does nothing. She, like, yeah, hey, she Boba just, Fett helped capture Luke. I want to say he helped capture Luke and Han Solo in the holiday special. Doesn't Phasma die like off screen? We don't talk about the holiday special. We did. We did a whole podcast <laughs> on the holiday special. <laughs> did you? I don't think I listened to that one. <laughs> yeah. Should. Uh, we ended it by all singing the. Uh, <laughs> what we ended it by all singing the song from it. I can't remember the name. Good of the night, song. but not goodbye. Oh yeah, the good night, but <laughs> yeah, we were all off. It was really funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but this uh yeah you get to Terra. i like how in the second level this basically we're just going to talk about terrace this podcast but, yeah because um, i'm already at an hour and six minutes in yeah yeah basically That's where i expected this is like where the meat of the the story begins like this is where everything comes together it is where you get to the second level and i like you come across mission veo and zalbar in a in a cantina and anyone who's played a video game before knows as soon as you meet them you're like oh you're going to be companions later because you're the only people that aren't being mean to me and you both look different to everybody else and just so everybody knows mission is a twi'lek uh, zalbar is a wookie and they're like best friends and mission's yeah. like 14 i think yeah she's 14 zalbar is like mysterious and stoic and you don't know anything about him he's just a wookie that's like along the ride along with the ride with her um but i love i love their relationship like you meet them and some guys come up to threaten mission and then like zalvar gets back with their food and he's like just starts like like howling at them they're like we'll get you next time mission yeah and then she makes them leave and he's just like i just brought my food out i'm hungry and she goes we'll eat later yeah this is already your fourth meal today she's something like that <laughs> like we'll get it's you wookie. food later I like yeah, she, <laughs> she's like she just like makes fun of him so much. Yeah, and then I guess to to progress that plot, Zalbar eventually gets kidnapped. Yes, and you are um you're supposed to find mission to get her to help you. Like so, there's like a gang war like with the swoop bike gangs. Yeah, um, you know that battle is taken that. by the swoop bike gangs. Yeah, by the yeah. not the uh by the black Volkers. Uh, the black Brezik. Volkers by Brezik, Yeah. And you know that he has them, and then you can choose to go with them for the dark side or go with the hidden Vex for the light side. And Gadden Vec, the leader of the hidden Vex, tells you to find Mission. And then you go and find her, and then she goes, well, my friend's been taken, so you need to help me. And then the, and then you go into the sewers of Terrace with a bunch of Gamorreans, and it's, it just takes so long. Yeah, you have to fight the Rackles, which is just a nightmare until you can get, like, the Rackul serum. And this is essentially, like... It's it's like the classic RPG thing of like, oh, I need the Rackle serum. Why? So I can get into the sewer. Why? So I can help Mission find Zalbar. Why? So she can get me into the base. Why? So I can get into the swoop bike race. Why? So I can get Bastil out. Why? So I can get to Davik's estate and get off the planet. It's like, it's like at some point you're so deep into like a quest line that just everything will like work its way back. It's like, Jesus Christ. But it, it didn't it's bother me at all it's a slog for me uh admittedly it's, it's just like it's the biggest offense in the entire game of like the problem that mmos go with where it's like yeah. fetch and quest, fetch and retrieve quests where like okay get this thing come back okay i will go and get this thing come back and it's like I, I, and i think just because the sewers like you fight the gamorians you fight the rat ghouls that part of the game isn't fun to me but as soon as you're out of it and you have mission you have zolbar you have karth and then you are starting the swoop bike thing to get Bastila, like that to me is like where the game begins. Like that's where I get excited about yeah. it. Yeah, as soon as you get Bastila, and it's like, that's like, yeah, that is really where like the story begins. It's like you have your you have your crew, and then Bastila joins, and Bastila is a part of your crew, but she's also like, Not. she's also yeah, like the she's the story companion. She's like she's the one that's that's part of the story. Like you're gonna talk to her to progress everything. And, and she's then, also this... so Princess Leia where like you rescue her and <laughs> oh, she just God. goes like, I was totally fine. I didn't need you to rescue me. And like you yeah. and Karth are sitting there going like, what did you say? Like, I <laughs> love, I love this? right after you get her, if you're traveling with her and Karth, there, it, there's a point where the game stops and Karth's like, so where's your lightsaber? And she's like, 
uh, it must have rolled away from me in the pod, like in the the pod crash. And he's like, a Jedi losing their lightsaber isn't that like illegal or something? <laughs> and she gets so flustered by it, like, yes, yes, fuck her up, Karth. Did you ever get it back? Her, her she gets lightsaber? hers back. Yeah, she, she has back, a double bladed yeah. yellow lightsaber that she gets back. Which okay, I, I remember I had it. Um, I can't, I can't remember. remember. I steal it because I like it. I can't remember. I, I my game kind of glitched here. It was very strange because I killed Brezik. And he had a double bladed yellow lightsaber. That's Basilas. That's Basilas. But she, she still talks about how like she like she lost her lightsaber. Like this is this is your lightsaber, Bas. I'm this is yours. I found Whoa. it for you. Speaking of the, glitches, the only I have a question. I'm not using it is because I can't yet. <laughs> I had a glitch the entirety of this game, and I wonder if it was just me or not. Like oh, whenever I was playing. Okay, I'd be fighting, I'd be doing something. All of a sudden, my character would not move. Just my character. I had it to switch to another character. Okay, it happened it's a um, lot. It's about every... If, it happens, like, every, like, 20, 30, 40 minutes. Uh, if you're running around, like, sometimes you just get caught on invisible geometry. I don't I know... I've never had that problem. It happens I mean, I, I was playing it on the tablet, that. but not on the computer. I think when they <laughs> when they ported it to tablet and, and phone, which, by the way, for a long time, this game was free on phones and tablets yep. which was and just like same game miracle. um yeah they they didn't really re they didn't really upscale it but they like they when they ported it they like f- tweaked some minor things so if you're playing on the pc yeah every now and then when you're running around your character will just stop you can switch characters like mike did or you can just take a couple steps back and it'll be fine oh no i mean it wasn't that he literally wouldn't move i mean i actually did run into the barrier shoe like you're talking about i literally had to either oh switch characters i mean one time it happened to all three characters i had to save the game exit the game reload the game oh i've never had that oh, happen. wow and this yeah, happened all the time throughout the entirety of the game Ooh, that that's... sounds really annoying that is odd there's there also a like, um... glitch on terrace that i found out on steam so we're, well, I want to talk more about Terrace, but near the end of Terrace, like, when you escape, <laughs> I had to strip down Karth and strip down my character in order for both of them to run to the ship naked. Otherwise, they wouldn't run to the ship. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I had to take all their armor, all their weapons, strip them completely, nothing, just their, just to how stupid they look. And otherwise, they would not run to the ship. The cutscene would not play. The game would just completely crash each time. That's bizarre. Um, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's really strange. I am... Um... I don't know, if, uh, Riley, you might do this when, like, you know a character is about to leave, like when you know Trask is about to fight the Dark Jedi, do you remove everything from his inventory? I do, every time. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like I'll take that blaster back. Uh, <laughs> this is clothing, it's absolutely worthless, but I'll, I'll take s- that. I'll never sell that, but I'll keep yeah. it. Yeah. I'll, you're just sleeping at night with, like, Trask's shirt. Like, <laughs> Oh, did you guys have a you? hard time with credits like i for a long time in this game was always like broke <laughs> until riley and i really? have no problem with credits but we both do something that's insane we what play pizak we play pizak for hours oh that stupid card game yeah stupid we, card I didn't even try game. It. you heretic that game is amazing we uh i think both of us will probably sit down and play pizak and the very beginning of the game um I think it's Gelrude is the guy in the first cantina. Or no, it might be Nicholas. Oh, I, Ooh, Gel- Gelrude is the guy you buy the t- the cards from. And then it's yeah. Nicholas or Nicholas that you play. Yeah, and he will only play you like five times before he calls you a cheater. But Yeah, and he can only maximize cantina, like 50 credits of vets. It's annoying. Yeah. In the second cantina, immediately, there's a guy who will just play you infinitely. And I always play with him for like two hours just to get a shitload of credits. There's um, also a guy in Dantooine that, uh, not Dantooine, Tatooine, that'll play you, and you can, I think you can I think, bet, I think, like, 500 credits or something yeah, in that it's cantina. A lot. Yeah, and yeah. that's where I will just sit and, like, I will grind that game. So, to answer your question, Mike, no, I've never had an issue with credits. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> even buy the deck, I, because I, I didn't have a lot of credits. I'm like, I saw kind of how the card game looked, just like the little cards you get, and I'm like, I don't care enough, so I didn't do, oh, no. And yeah, I, I did do a lot of the bounties. Like, I, I fucked myself on a couple of them because I was trying to do everything. Like, I played this game completely light side where yeah. I paid the girl 200 <laughs> gil- or two hundred gold or credits to go and get rid of the bounty. Then I went to the guy and found out she never paid the bounty, so I had to pay the bounty again. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I was pissed. Uh, yeah, as a, uh, yeah, Diaz, I always... 
like with the bounties i always get the bounties first go talk to the person go talk to like who put the bounty on them if i can like i also um i know mike definitely didn't do this because it's hard as shit but riley did you do the uh did you do the, the dueling ring dueling? no i didn't because like the the biggest issue i have with that is that if you're under leveled once you get to ice it's impossible yeah like, you I, can't you can't I, beat her i uh, i did i come back like Every time, every time I get to a new area, I come back and try to fight the next person, and I was able to get Bindex Dark Keller this time. Oh wow! I've never been able to do that, yeah, but I also to used to level up. So I like that's all tied together too. You have to, um, you have to do the bounties to get the bounty for Bindex Star Killer, then go do the dueling ring, and beat all the duel like the five duelists, and then you have to challenge Bindex to a duel, and it's a death match. And it's like, but you get like, you get like almost a thousand credits off of that. Girl on two fingers, though, is probably the most pathetic character oh, yeah. in the game. He just like, he's like, did you come up here to gloat that you beat me? Everybody beats me. And I was just like, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> Stop I dueling then. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Jesus. You only have two fingers. Oh, hi, oh and we, and we should announce we have a special <laughs> guest now on the episode. Hmm. Yeah, hi everyone. Hey Stefan, <laughs> you made it. Stefan, it's been an hour and twenty minutes. We are and still, we're on, still on terror. <laughs> oh my gosh! I told you. <laughs> I uh, I feel bad because I'm really curious what you guys said about our main character in the beginning. We um, haven't gotten there yet. We haven't. Yeah, we've managed to avoid the spoilers pretty much. <laughs> okay, like it slipped out once, but we're fine. Oh, uh, <laughs> it might not slip out at all, depending. We're actually at a good point because we can skip ahead now to uh, Davik's estate and getting off terrace. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't. Do we even need to talk about that because it's like it's yeah. so quick, and we it's... have to talk about it because we have to talk about the best character in the game. If you're about to talk about Kalo Nord, I'm going to punch you. Candorous Ordo. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> oh, well, you have Candorous Ordo, and you have that stupid robot art looking like R2 unit that. Hey, hey, that... You shut the hey, fuck up. Yeah. Wait, no, you need it. him. <laughs> okay, that part where you had to buy the How droid just so you, you could break into the Sith base was stupid. How dare T three M four? I never is used a, them. Is a Not integral part of the crew. I, I grabbed them. Goddamn safe. I unlocked the door. I switched them out of the party. And never saw them again. I've never been more angry at you than I am now. <laughs> okay. T three. I can't wait for you to play Code R two because T three M four makes R two D two look like a fucking bitch. All right. T <laughs> three is an MVP. T three is he he saves Revan multiple times and. Is like everything Revan in this game is just to help Revan succeed. What are you talking about? The entirety of Nice Old Republic. I, know you. I don't think he got it. I didn't hear. I actually was too angry. I didn't hear what he said. <laughs> he just ignored me. Um, the entirety of Nice Old Republic Two, really, like when you break it down, is T three helping you so that you can help Revan. Well, Mitra. Uh, yeah. Well, that what R two so that Mitra can go help Revan. Like if you killed R two D two during the Clone Wars and Star Wars, Anakin, there would have been no, there would have been no dark Anakin. And he'd been dead. R two D two is like, like the I like that the droids in this universe are kind of like just loyal puppies that just love you. <laughs> okay. If you're okay. if you're like a good guy, all the droids will just like freak and they like freak out when you like show up because they're like, oh my god, Master's finally home. Oh, and we go, had, for a walk, go kill some. Sith. And they give you spikes. <laughs> oh, we kind of mentioned it. I actually like the swoop racing part. Like, the, it's a really stupid mini game where you just like I hit the arrow keys. Hate it. Or, I didn't. I didn't like it at first. What? But yeah. once I did it 10, 20 times and finish all of them, I didn't. I kind of. I kind of liked the little mini game. You know what the trick yeah. is to it? <laughs> there's a there's a trick to um to making it easier is uh, the first time you do it, you have to make this sure your time sucks. is just slightly better because the the person behind you will always get a better time than you and so if you, you race really it. well yeah like the f i did it this time i get i got two dancing on this playthrough because i just didn't have time to finish the game um but i played it like 30 times before if anyone says anything uh, <laughs> <laughs> the first time i did it i was trying to do bad and i actually fucked up and got a time of 22 seconds and so i had to beat 20 seconds Damn. <laughs> that, that must be hard it was um yeah, I, I made a mistake because I didn't see where the finish line was and I forgot to stop. <laughs> uh, if so anyone's curious, have... that this whole swoop part is all like F-Zero. That's exactly yes. what it is. Yeah. 
And it's like, it's impossible. Like, so I, I mentioned earlier that I was playing this playthrough on the tablet. It's impossible <laughs> on the tablet. It's yeah, so okay. hard. Just I... to even <laughs> finish it the first time without crashing your swoop bike 18,000 times. Yeah, I did it. Uh, I remember doing it on my phone and just being like, I can't even tell what's happening right now. Yeah, it's so hard. I hate it. I wish, um, I wish had like when they ported the game to the phone, I kind of wish they had changed to like top down or something. <laughs> for that part like it's it's just so impossible um but yeah I, I don't like it on terrace i like it later on tatooine when you can choose to do it and yeah, i like I it in the terrace they make you do it in the second game there's like um there's a big like swoop thing you can do on narshada that's really fun yeah that actually is pretty cool but yeah this game it's like you have to like oh you've got to do this thing you've never done before and you have to be the best at it so you can save bastila and also bastila doesn't really need you to save her it's like oh, yeah, well, why the fuck didn't she get out of there before i had to do all the swoop racing <laughs> yeah, she breaks out right when you break out yeah yeah and she yells at you about it like you ungrateful i love um <laughs> i like her a lot i like i do too i'm obsessed with her <laughs> Basil sucks. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I love when you get back to the apartment and it's you and Karth and Basila in Mission and Zalvar, and you're like, "Great, we saved Basila. Uh, what do we do now?" <laughs> it's just like the whole like the whole plot stops where they're like, "Oh yeah, we don't actually know how to get off this planet still." Yeah, we rescue you. You're still trapped. And then uh, a character you see kicks some ass a little bit earlier sends a little messenger away. You get another message. Go meet Candrus Ordo in the in the cantina. <laughs> Okay, you like definitely. Candorous so much more than me. I like Candorous because I know I knew that Candorous was Mandalore in the second game, and second. you didn't. Yeah, you've told me that like three times, and every time I'm like, no, he's not. And then, yeah. whereas <laughs> I didn't know that Telos and Taros were separate planets, this is like <laughs> Riley's blind spot. She didn't realize that Candorous Ordo was also Mandalore, whose last name is Ordo. I totally forgot about, about that. <laughs> yeah. I, I totally don't pay about. attention to his story. Oh, his yeah, that's right. <laughs> Because he's just like, a, he's just a, like, he is a Mandalorian who... Stuck on this planet working for Davit King. Yeah, he's become a mercenary like most mer like most Mandalorians have. And he just wants, like, he feels, I don't know, it's not really a shame. He just feels, like, lost without a war, which is kind of like the standard existence for a Mandalorian. Yeah. If you're not they, fighting, they, then you're nothing. Like they get, yeah, they get so much honor in battle, and then, like, Candorous gets put in this place where he basically has to be somebody's sort of like go-to guy and he's just like i'm not doing anything it's a shitty mob enforcer and it's like this guy he's like his whole storyline is like i used to i used to like use ba i used to take basilisk basilisk droids and conquer planets and now i'm some shitty like drug enforcer like i just want to fight again i just want to be a part of the battle again mm. I, I love that he's like just trying to get off this planet get away from davik and, and go live his best life i, I always feel him. like if there was a movie version of this that like, Candorous could be played by Mads Mikkelsen. Oh, or absolutely. Ron Perlman. I can yeah, see Ron that. Perlman. He is based on yeah. Ron Perlman, actually. Um, oh, I can see Oh, that. yeah. Uh, is that true? I've never heard that. Yeah. Um, he's, uh... You mean you don't trust what Stu says? <laughs> <laughs> I've known Stuart a long time. No, I do not. It's <laughs> fair. Um, he's not, uh... Yeah, yeah, he's based on Ron Perlman. He's based on, like, um... I can't remember what movie Ron Perlman had done at that point. That was, yeah, uh, was, was Ron Perlman in before 2003? Uh, Probably uh, Alien Resurrection, maybe? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. That's yeah. it. It looks like it. <laughs> yeah, his whole thing was that he was like, he's meant to be like the, the Ron Perlman type of character. I can't think of who he's voiced by. <laughs> it's not Ron Perlman. <laughs> I'm looking it up right now. It's, oh God, it's it's a voice by John Sigan. Yes, um who is like uh i love whenever i hear him in other games because i'm like that's candorous <laughs> <laughs> you're back yeah, he's guy. in um he's in toy story 3 as well and it's very funny to me because he's a uh i think he's just like additional voices and he plays uh the character twitch and whenever i hear him talk i'm like why is candorous ordo hanging out with woody <laughs> what is going on <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a couple voice actors that show up in these games that show up in like all Bioware games, and I just I love whatever I hear their voices and just can remember them. Basil is Jennifer Hale. But yeah, Basil is Jennifer Hale. Um, the one the guy who plays uh, Rook Lamar is in a lot of shit. Um, You're obsessed with. <laughs> yeah, I hate Rook Lamar so much, uh, <laughs> but I think um, Candace is in a bunch of games and. 
God, who's the other guy? There's like one of the other Jedi Knights is like in a ton of games that just recognizes his voice everywhere. I want to know who voiced like the Twi'leks and stuff that have like two voice lines. Oh, God, it's so annoying that it's probably one of the downfalls <laughs> of this game where it's like anytime you have it, like it's even worse on Manon where mm. the self calves have the same two things and you have to talk to so many of them that it's just the same lines over and over again. <laughs> or when you get that, um, you get that's like kind of side quest with the the girl on your ship who just says Mushi Shakapaka oh. <laughs> Mushi Shakapaka <laughs> like that like the Twilights have that same line and it's just it'll be in my head forever <laughs> it shows up so much and if you talk to a Twilight Mushi Shakapaka <laughs> that in the um <laughs> if Riley knows this the, the way the droids die in the MMO is like a whistly <laughs> like noise that just it's in my head forever where it's like <laughs> like it's just it's every so time annoying, they, because the, and they're always like the first to die especially because it's yeah just... you hear it so much and like mushishaka pocket and that whistle will be in my head until the day i die <laughs> it's it's terrible that like uh i do like when you meet it's not jabba but it's the the hut that's on tatooine he has a couple individual lines that are that stand out like at some point he says like star killer and it's like normal like uh, Hatties, where he's like, oh, a star killer. And you're like, wait, what? That was different. That was a different line. If you can speak Galactic Basic, speak Galactic Basic. Yeah. Yeah, like when you're so rude to Mission Veo when you first meet her, you're like, oh my God, a Twi'lek who can speak Galactic Basic? Like, think about the context of that in real life. If you were to go up to, like, if you go up to, like, a Spanish looking person and be like, oh, oh my, my God, God, you speak, speak English? English? Wow, that's Her? rare. <laughs> Karth is really rude to her too. If you have them out in your party, where at one point yeah. Karth is like, he's like, "How have you even survived?" And she's like, "I'm 14. Like, I'm I'm perfectly capable." And he just goes, "All right, okay, whatever." I love. They're Karth like an asshole. They're like my favorite <laughs> companions not. to travel with <laughs> in that because of that story. Because Karth and Twi- like Karth and uh, Mission Veo like are always butting heads, and he always just sees her as like a child, which makes sense for her story later. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, they like they always just butt heads. And he's like, like, yo, you're just like some spoiled brat that like barely managed to survive. You're just lucky. And she's just constantly going like, I'm an adult. God damn it. And they like eventually if you travel with companions long enough, they'll argue and they'll like they'll both kind of come to this mutual understanding. Yeah, they apologize to each other. And yeah, I think Karth and hers are like the best where she comes to like rely on Karth. And he's like, oh, you like you are an adult like you are like you do know what you're doing. I trust your skills. It's it's very sweet. It, uh, it you makes were sense saying perfect. about like Davik's estate. I like how when you get there, you like I, it might have been just me. Uh, okay, but I just had Candrus. Like I in my guide, I was reading it said you can get another character to join you. I went through that whole part with only Candrus. Was I supposed to have a third person? No, you can. No. By, by that they mean you can choose a third person to go with. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was just Candrus for me for some party. reason. Yeah, you misread that by. You could go with, like, any of your companions. You just needed to take Candrus with oh, you. I screwed up, because I had a really hard time with that Davik fight near the when you fight Davik <laughs> like, and yeah. Kellen Nord. I had to do it four times and throw tons of grenades before I got lucky enough to do it. Yeah, you always well, actually, take... Uh, sorry, I did it my first try. Then I died on the turret section, oh, and I didn't save. So I had to do it all over again. My, um, my, <laughs> my policy is to always have a Jedi in my party whether that be me or somebody else. So, like, if I'm at that early part, I need to take Bastila with me because she's the only one that can heal and use any sort of force powers. Can she heal by that point? I didn't think she could. Yes, she can start healing at level six. And I think once you get her, you should be around level four. Well, I did all the bounty stuff, so I was level six by the time I got to her. Oh, okay. I might have been super underleveled. Yeah, if you don't do the bounty stuff, I think you get to her around level three. But you can... I think you can also upgrade and heal as well, but you suck at it compared to Bastila's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Bastila's like, like still yours yet. for a while. Yeah. Uh, she's like twice as strong as you with healing, I yeah, believe. She, she is yeah. the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's her first Jedi, and she's a Jedi guardian. So, I mean, she's like... She's, yeah, she's a sentinel, isn't she? Is she a sentinel? I thought she was I a think guardian. So. She's, got the, she's got the yellow lightsaber. Well, that yeah, she's a sentinel like because of her lightsaber, but I think in terms of the classes in the game, she's a Jedi guardian. Oh. So right. she has like the strongest force powers, but she's not that tough vitality where she doesn't have uh the best like vitality and skills she's like mostly force powers and and she can't equip any armor really other than the jedi robes and stuff yeah armor is something that like you can do in the games like if you do ranged or if you do uh 
if you do like a straight up melee build, then you want to wear heavy armor. But if you want to build like a strong Jedi support class or just like a, a force offense class, then you kind of want to avoid the armors. Wearing heavy armor will actually uh, prevent you from casting or casting from using certain Sorry. force powers. Force powers. Like, oh god, I, I wish I would have known this. It would have made that whole part so much easier because I got my ass handed to me <laughs> by Caleb and Ordev. After I beat the first try without any issue, I died four or five times <laughs> before I could get past it a second time. I just kept fucking up on it. Calanord oh. is just oh. an asshole. Oh, yes. <laughs> he... well, and he's like the one plot hole in the game, which I'll, I'll, I'll mention later, but like he knows who you are yeah but doesn't say anything when you run into him in the cantina in the undercity he's yeah. just literally like i'm gonna count mm -hmm. to three and like i'm like you you can piss off or whatever but yeah, he like, you, but it's, you he, know what'll happen <laughs> yeah he's also got the dumbest outfit in the yes, galaxy i'm it's, sorry uh... you don't like his blue and white outfit <laughs> his blush <your> head <laughs> <laughs> he's got like a He's got like a '90s like like clueless beret on, like the like the clueless movie, like the the '90s Beverly Hills Girl beret. And he does look pretty <laughs> stupid. The hat, the hat is a problem. If they just got rid of the hat, he just had hair. And he's like, so dumb too. He's got a unique character model that makes him shorter than everybody else too. Yeah. So he's like looks... the least threatening looking person in the entire game. Yeah. It just design wise, anyone in design, like anyone who's ever done character design, can tell you if you want to make it an intense, intimidating character, you make them angular. You should, like you have a lot of angles in there. You have a lot of like straight lines. Kalonord is like a little tiny globe. Like, just, <laughs> he's like it looks like bubbles. It's pudgy. It's <laughs> pudgy. He's got like he's got like circles all over his outfits. He does not look intimidating in any way. Ooh. And I don't know if that was meant to be like like to show like disparity between how he looked and how like threatening he was as a personality but it just does come off that way it's like hey like get the fuck out of here and then you realize that he can't be killed and you're like oh god like what is this nightmare existence i mean that's how i got through that part was i threw grenades at him because he would take more damage faster where then he would blow up the place and i can move on because when i tried to go after david i couldn't get him to that at that same point it's an important uh question that needs to be answered here mike how did you fight the rancor uh, well, first, I tried smacking him in the face with a lightsaber. <laughs> Not lightsaber, but a sword. <laughs> that didn't work so well. And then I went and read what to do. And I, I, cause I, I wasn't really read because for those of know, I don't really, I was just kind of hurrying through this game. <laughs> I already played through it once years ago and I didn't care as much. But I put the, you put the, you put like a grenade inside the feeding thing and then he eats it or something. Yeah, you can go that. stealth and, uh, and trick him to eating a grenade. Oh, There's I another way stealth. to beat him that I do sometimes. I That's... didn't know you this game had stealth until I was on Corban right before I beat it. Really? Stealth is one of the yeah. skills you get when you're recruiting your character. Oh, you did the auto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything auto. I didn't look at Oh, nothing. yeah, Stefan. Mike <laughs> auto leveled up everything. Oh, my God. Everybody, my... No. every character, everything. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Man. So, oh God. I didn't know what three and four was trash. So you know, basically, we how have did, to kill him now. Wait a, wait a second. How did you? If you had that much trouble, how did you get through the parts? So you know where in Terrace when you're in the sewers and you have to go across this bridge and there's like four points we have to bring down the force fields. I've never been able to do that without using self. Did you kill every single quadrant? I must have. I don't even remember what you're talking about, but I must have oh. killed everything. <laughs> I this killed is everybody Mike I games. could. <laughs> everything that wasn't wasn't going to give me dark side points, it got slashed and killed. Everything. <laughs> I've basically, we've been doing this podcast for a while, and I've come to the conclusion that Mike is really good at being really bad at games. <laughs> like, <laughs> he'll beat a game, and he'll come back, and he'll be like, yeah, I got to that. We're like, how did you, like, any time we'll be like, how did you beat this section? And he's like, oh, I just, I just did it this way. I'm like, that shouldn't work. How did you do that? <laughs> so yeah, no, I, I, I didn't sneak at all. I just killed everything. I would just try going rooms and just kill everything, use med pack when I had to, and just murder everybody. Yeah, and we'll, well, like I feel like, like if we left Mike in a room with like one of those little kids games where like you have to put the square <laughs> peg in the square hole, like we'd come in and we'd give them only round pegs, and they'd all be in the square hole, and we'd be like, how? <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't work this way. <laughs> <laughs> 
That reminds me when I when I was a kid, one of my father's favorite sayings was, "You can't put a square in a triangle." And he used to piss me off. It was his way of saying that you know, <laughs> zop, something stupid won't work. I don't remember why, but he used to use this phrase all the time. I'm like, "What if the square is smaller? It would fit in the triangle just fine." Like I don't understand. Like why are you saying like the stupid thing? Philosophically, make makes sense now. <laughs> no, I still think it's stupid. I'm like, I don't think you went with. Why'd you go with that when I was a kid? But yeah, <laughs> he brought it up recently. I'm like, don't bring up that phrase. I hate that <laughs> phrase because of you. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where are we at so we uh we yeah you do dabbing state you meet candorous uh at this point you like you have candorous you have mission you have zalvar you got karth and Bastila, and you get introduced to the ship the probably millennium falcon greatest the nope nope <laughs> <I know. laughs> the greatest ship of all time in star wars it's probably i would say it's probably like the second most beloved ship in all of star wars i would put it pretty high up on any like beloved spaceship list um the evan hawk it is yeah. it is the, the t-34 is that the ship that you're in love with from star wars you know i'm wrong aren't i the aeg 77 vigo <laughs> yeah yeah, I like oh, that there are people that? now that know he's obsessed that. with that ship. Yeah, I, I know he is. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't understand. I Vigo? love it. It's so cool looking. Um, I like that because of this podcast. There are people out there now that know I have this love for this very specific ship and occasionally bring it up to me. <laughs> and I'm just so happy because before no one had ever heard of it. <laughs> I've raised awareness of this ship ever so slightly. <laughs> <laughs> even I, I do like the even hawk i i wasn't crazy evan hawk yes. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a purpose either <laughs> oh my god yeah. Yeah. evan hawk just the, lay the layout of the ship is my favorite like yeah. it's just it's very intuitive and like i like that they put characters in certain spaces and it, i don't know I, it's the one map in a video game that i've actually memorized well are there side quests in the ship um, you can do right yeah, um, yeah. There's, there's, there's a, a couple side quests that are like shit specific. There's one that's a, a a stowaway girl from off the planet. Yeah, we talked and about because. That. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was <laughs> just gonna say because I was I was going to the dark side that I was able to just basically tell her get the fuck off my ship the yeah. whole time. Oh, like, I didn't even care. I was just I, like, uh, don't care. I does anybody does anybody do what I do with the Gizkas where you just leave them on your ship forever? I do. I sold them. There's. You sold them? I think oh, they're man. so cute that I was just like, you can stay. Like, it's totally fine. I think they're so cute. Tribbles. And they, the way that that quest pays off if you don't do it is so funny to me. If you uh, if you don't complete that quest and you just have Gizkas all over your ship, then it will pay off at the very end of the game. It's 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 hilarious. Oh, I, I know exactly. I know what you're talking about. And it's yeah. <laughs> I just sold them. I mean, I don't think I even got any credits for it. I was just like, the guy's like, okay, I'll take them. I'm like, sure, get them off my ship. I'm tired of looking at them. I think I like the Ebon Hawks so much. Part I think part part of the reason it's loved and part of the reason I love it is because up to this point, you didn't get to see. I don't think you really got to see like the layout of the Millennium Falcon. Really, you kind yeah. of you can watch the movies and kind of understand where everything is, mm -hmm. but they haven't. I I, I don't even know if. To this day, they've given like a full layout of it in any shows or games. Like they, there's the expanded universe, I know, but I don't think they've shown the entirety of it. I think oh. Solo was the closest to like walking you around the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, it's it's not too big, and you know, yeah. I think most people got a real look at it with the action figures and toys, anyways. That was yeah. basically how you got to understand the Millennium Falcon, but not like the the inside of it. And Evan Hawk, you get to like essentially walk around what the Millennium Falcon, like a prototype of it, more or less. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, okay, like I now understand how that ship works better. <laughs> I yeah. now understand like when they're playing Dejarik, they're in this room. <laughs> when uh okay when oh Luke and is all when uh han's all hurt and leia's talking to him they're in this back room so like and for that when you do those box. those yeah. turret sequences i can't i hated those turret sequences those they have like awful. three of them okay it wasn't just me then that's good there were three of them in yeah. this game they were just annoying mm -hmm. it comes back in the second game but there's only one time it comes back in the second game one is enough it's 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 even harder in the second game if i remember correctly the second like, game yeah they throw a lot of enemies at you and then they're like we're not going to do that anymore but we're going to have like these uh like space battles instead and the space battles are actually kind of cool i just love how the guy said it's really easy and then i died right after it said that too it was great <laughs> i was like Fuck it. i hadn't saved i was even more angry uh it's easier than shadows of the empire i'd say yeah i think even at this point um that's not saying a whole lot though i, I like how e tough. even at this point when you're in like an isolated 
area and you're just trying to get off the planet there's still they're still throwing so much at you story like just lore wise and universe wise like the amount of characters that are just in davik's estate just like to give you little details about davik to tell you more about like his role in the world he's got like uh like a slave pen in the back where <laughs> twi'leks just massage you i guess twi'leks uh, are always slaves in star wars for some reason yeah twi'leks are always the go-to slave race Oh, there's <laughs> dancers. Yeah, there's the face. Hey, the I don't coolest think... Twilight is in Rebels, though. I can't remember the her name. blue one? You're talking about Green the, one. the Inara, the captain? Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, she's great. Uh, you're talking about the Jedi. She don't, she don't make it out of Ren's of the Sith, so. No, no, no. You're, no, you're thinking of Ayla Secura. That's, <laughs> That's right. the Jedi. Yeah. Um, Rebels, I think it's Inara is the name of the ship. Or the name of the, the captain of the ship. Yeah, that's a... I think it's Inara? I, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll not here nor there. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll kill. Yeah, we we gotta move on. Uh, so yeah, I like that. Like you know, there's still all these like uh, these crime bosses there. There's like all these these people that he's like influencing and have like other people that is also kind of implied that he's kidnapped as well. Which I did all the. Oh, one thing we I don't even really mention like in this game you do a lot of talking. Like there's lots of different scenarios where you can say stuff that will affect how the game is gonna play out. Yeah, which well, I think that the game cool. is made in the dialogue. That's that's yeah. where everything happens. The I mean like random characters that have no bearing on the story will have like you know 10 lines of dialogue that are just that just build the world build the story build the build the lore like the like right i said the, the racist dude who's just out on terrorists <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like get those aliens out of here like if you i love talking to him like i think if you don't talk to him at first and you come back with mission later he gets really upset with you he's like oh, what the really? yeah he's like what the hell are you doing with those aliens on the uh on the upper city and you could be like hey fuck off old man <laughs> I think you call it like this. There's a line that's like, like at first you say like, "Oh, you're just some old crazy coot," <laughs> and he's he starts like spouting more racist shit. And you're like, "Get away from me, you bigot!" It's like, tell him to fuck off. Like I know it's a Star Wars game, but like, ah, you old coot. Like, yeah, that's too easy. <laughs> I think it's the one time in in Terrace that if you actually sort of like are a little bit more aggressive, that Karth is just like, "Yeah, that guy's an asshole." Like, yeah. you go for it. <laughs> like how there, there's so much to do just around. Like depending on how you uh, how you interact with people, there's so much to do just in that like hub area where you go to the cantina and like some random nobles like, "Where's my drink, you waiter?" Like you're like you're yeah. nothing. I own you, and you're just like fuck off, lady. And then later you can find that. her in the street. She's like, "There's the guy who was mean to me," and she's got two mercenaries with her. Yeah, because her dad's like really rich or something. Yeah, and you kill the mercenary. She runs away. She was like, "No, daddy." <laughs> <laughs> This is I love like I I am mean to her every single time because I'm like yes like I hate this I hate this one so much. Oh, see if you're nice to her and go like yeah I'll get your drink, then literally immediately after that like a waiter comes out with her drink and you don't. Yeah. see <laughs> I just I love I love being mean to her because I'm like you deserve it, but it's kind of dark because once you get out of Davik's estate, you realize that everything that happened on Terrace no longer matters. <laughs> No, I mean, that's, at all. <laughs> that was a really cool scene where you see Malk like, oh, hey, we want to kill Bastlo. We want to stop. We're just going to blow up the whole planet and say, fuck it. And they're like, we have troops down there. It's like, that's nice. Yeah, We're it's done. great because I think the first time that happens is when you get to Davik's estate, you get a little like you get, like it does like a little cutscene of like um, Malik's ships reaching Terrace. And you know that they're looking for Bastila. And yeah, when he's when he's like fire on the planet, and they're like, sir, that's our planet. Like, that's a Sith planet. And he's like, we have soldiers down there. Like, yeah. he's like, I don't remember. I don't remember asking you for your advice or something. It's just like, just kill him. He just, I, well, he I just like glasses it. it. <laughs> and, like, Halo here. It's a 2003 game. The cinematic of him destroying the city is actually pretty impressive still. It is really good. The there's like a laser that blasts through one of the buildings and the building starts to collapse. And I remember still like still I'm so impressed by that. I'm like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. It still looks good. Mm -hmm. And even, I, even my PC was having a hard time with this game just because I had could, the graphics uh, on really well. A big part of the MMO is going back to Terrace. And there's a lot of like you could see like crashed buildings everywhere and they have like the giant laser burns through them. It's just like they didn't completely destroy oh, it. So cool. They pretty uh, much destroyed no. it. There's just a lot of wreckage everywhere. Okay. I mean, some people survived. Yeah, some yeah, some people survived. Some people do. Okay. Uh, and then some people live technically. <laughs> and this is when the game then takes you on to Datooine, which is like where Dantooine. it's a smaller planet. Like I was, <laughs> I was happy after Terrace taking forever. Datooine is really quick, especially if you don't do the side it quest. It is. Yeah. And you also like get uh, the best companion. Well, second best companion. 
Uh, really? You, you like it that much? I love Juhani. I like Juhani a lot, too. Mm-hmm. I think oh, she's my... F- well, Stefan, you went the dark side. Did you even get her? No, I didn't. You How far did you get? Well, no, you can you can kill her instead of um, bringing her on uh, your mission. Yeah, I think this is the first real hit that the Jedi suck um, pretty like explicitly because <laughs> they give you like this is like your first mission as a Jedi. First, you get the ambassadors like I go talk to the Jedi about something important. You guys stay here. And you just like shoot the shit with Karth for a little bit um, <laughs> while you wait. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this so. is also where you have so much of the story kind of start like they talk about like why you they, they, they kind of like beat around the bush about how you are like very skilled and your you force powers. You know, your uh, mitochondria uh, are off the uh, scale. They don't say mitochondria. Mito- I know. <laughs> they don't say mitochondria. Oh, mitochondria. Oh, mitochondria is fair. <laughs> I, I think uh, Power of the Entire Expanded Universe all agreed. Everybody agreed that midichlorians were stupid and that we weren't going to talk about it ever again. And so <laughs> I don't think... Helps. I don't know if midichlorians have ever come up in a game. Oh, man. I can't <laughs> think of any minister. game that brings up midichlorians. <laughs> <laughs> very dumb thing but as i was saying <laughs> so i i like kind of where this goes this is where you have to go with like a little test and where you get your first lightsaber and all that was just cool crystal to me. Mm-hmm. And you can choose the color i mean that was all awesome you have like remember you know I, I just used the guide to memorize the code that wasn't gonna bother but what color did everyone go with <laughs> the beginning yellow obviously green yeah, yellow Mm, red <laughs> it's <kind of> funny. <laughs> hey uh you got any more of these crystals <laughs> So we've only got these three colors. I'm looking for something a little redder. <laughs> that that like... is one of the things the second one expands on is you actually have like, so when you meet someone who asks you about your lightsaber, you have so many yeah. more color options. Oh my God. I always go with Viridian. Silver, like the waterfalls on something. But... Viridian, like the fountains on something. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because you just see, you don't get your lightsaber back really, but you can see your lightsaber uh, yeah. in the game. And it's like, it's just so cool to be able to see other colored lightsabers like that's a big thing in the canon is people freak out when there's an orange lightsaber because it's different it's like really rare even in the expanded universe orange is kind of a rare color but yeah like mm-hmm. viridian almost never shows up silver almost never there's i think there's only one there might only be one character who used silver lightsabers Ahsoka. I believe... like Ahsoka. She, yeah, she she gets it from somebody else though yeah I can't remember. she gets it by purifying the i don't want to talk about it so i hate the living color <laughs> i hate the <laughs> stupid thing i hate that so much oh lightsaber colors change with you well that doesn't really work because uh, all the lightsabers we've ever seen have been green or blue so as we were talking about like a dantooine me, samuel <laughs> jackson is is such a different Jedi that he made his lightsaber purple? Like that's well, not how that should work. He should just pick. To be purple. fair, like if you look at the background of that movie, it's like Samuel Jackson's favorite color is purple, and he was like, yeah. George Lucas, can I have a purple lightsaber? And he was just like, uh, sure, I guess. <laughs> Didn't he say like I would only play a Jedi if my lightsaber was purple? <laughs> Something I I don't I'm not sure if that story is real, but I have heard that. Yeah, it's just I love the idea of Samuel Jackson being like, I would like a purple lightsaber, please, and being like, no, all the lightsabers are blue or green or yellow, and he's like purple george purple <laughs> so, we were kind of mentioned about like juhani this is one of the first parts where like you can it's one of the characters you get but you can kill her if you want it took me forever to persuade her to join because i didn't have a high enough skill apparently you can kill her as you can well, kill her persuade is maybe the number one skill. Or... yeah you, you don't you never get her if you you can kill her in the dark side and then that character slot that companion yeah. slot is just blank it's yep. empty forever. And the first time I did the game, I killed her and I didn't I for the rest of the game I was like, where's this last companion I'm supposed to get? I don't know who it is. Which sucks her. because she's super powerful. She is she's awesome. I did not a, like her. She has a <laughs> ton of skills too. I used her one like, from the game made me. Oh my god. She's like, she is like my go to companion because she's powerful and she has a ton of skills. So she's yeah. like the perfect I didn't companion. like the way she looked. Well, she's a, she's a Cathar. Yeah, she's oh, like I didn't like the I didn't like the race. What cat people? I guess. I guess. I guess Mike's racist. Um, <laughs> yes. uh, hey, I'm racist getting Wookies. Remember, I kept saying Kashyyyk wrong, Kashyyyk last time. So, <laughs> but to say to bring this back to uh, the Jedi are terrible because the whole point of this episode is that the Jedi are dumb and bad. Um, the Jedi, you can kill her as a Jedi. You can just fail to convince her, or you can like not do the right like the right dialogue tree, and you can just end up killing her. And the Jedi send you there. Their, their only mission that they give you is cleanse the grove. And if you kill her, they aren't really upset with you. They're just like, oh, thanks for doing that. Like, they 
they're so removed from everything that they're like that grove is dirty you gotta go clean it it's like well there's a lady staying there that's bad mm -hmm. like just clean the grove we don't care they, how it gets done it just needs to they be even like understand like when you tell them like ah there was no way i could talk her out of it i just had to take her out they're like okay yeah, cool. It happens. <laughs> every now and then we lose. Thanks for going out there. Yeah. 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 Sorry, every every now and then we lose a couple Jedi. It's fine. It's like, yeah. what? Like, what? There's a, like, a Sith living 20 feet away from you, and well, you can't be bothered to go fucking help her? You're a Jedi council. That's not even, <laughs> it's even, it's even worse than that, because what happens is that she's, like, like, her master is, like, so hard on her that she sort of like lashes back she makes yeah. one mistake and she's just like i'm evil i'm gonna i'm going to be you know on the dark side and then they're like okay go figure this out and it's like she made one mistake like yeah, go talk to her no, there's no redemption in their eyes welcome to the jedi <laughs> that's but even later the jedi are like i i, I kind of love this about the mmo because the mmo is is revan's jedi um yeah they've they've been changed and so in the mmo there's a lot of characters that are dark side that you bring to the light and you redeem that's like a, a consistent thing that happens and spoilers for the mmo i guess but at some point the republic and the sith have to team up and form an alliance and yep. it's like the best part of that game it's <laughs> it, you have to fight like the real sith empire and all of a sudden the the rebel like the the jedi the republic the sith they have to form this massive alliance and it's just like everyone has to get along now <laughs> but the other Figure thing about Good Dan luck. Tween that it gives you a couple like interesting side quests. There's a couple dumb ones you have to go solve a murder, which I kind of I did everything just because. But I like it how there's a whole side quest just about dialogue trying to figure out which person is guilty of this of this crime. Like that was interesting. <laughs> you had the Mandalorians you got to kill. That yeah. was fun. I think my favorite like really hard. Is, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think my favorite is the one where the droid uh, escaped from his master. Yeah, <laughs> because she, yeah, she's like obsessed with him, and she lost her husband, and she's just trying to like reflect I, that loss onto this droid. I <laughs> always forget about that quest because it's so weird. And every time I play the game, I'm like, God, I, I, I can't believe I forgot about like this droid that has this weird romance <laughs> yeah please i just want to die <laughs> i uh i went dark I sent side back. i went dark side so i was like uh i'm just gonna kill you and tell her you're still out here somewhere he's like what no no <laughs> oh. i always i always send him back because i'm like you know what like if you're in love with something in this game like if you're in love with something in star wars then just you know go ahead and love it i guess i, I don't know <laughs> you're not hurting anybody <laughs> poor droid <laughs> the, the droid's like completely self-aware it's like it's like yeah she loves me but i think it's unhealthy and so i'm just gonna go kill myself it's like no like your life kind of matters too that's i like i love in star wars there's a, a a theme where the good guy is also nice to droids everybody else hates droids like obi-wan uh hates. obi-wan hates droids yeah he's oh r2d2 okay. constantly but then like anakin who's like you know the hero of the prequels and you know sure, yeah. later on bad but initially he's the hero and then like luke is like the hero luke is immediately nice to like well he's not immediately nice to rgt2 but he's like you know i'll be like i'll give you an oil bath whereas my uncle doesn't even consider you to be like life forms i'm gonna i'll clean you up i'll take care of you i'll listen to what you have to say and that's yeah, kind of like that's a theme <laughs> There's like a certain sentience to them that like, especially in the games that you like, we haven't even talked about one of them that'll come up later, but they have personalities where you're just like, yeah, yeah, like you, you have memories, like you're picking up on stuff. Like, I don't want to be, you know, a dick to you. <laughs> there's a, like a, a dark, there's a darkness to that, like to their existence in Star Wars, because if you, you're supposed to memory wipe droids consistently. Yeah. To keep them like docile. And especially when you're in war. Yeah, yeah. Um, Clone Wars. That's yeah, that's a big part of Clone Wars where they capture R two D two and Anakin's like, I I don't memory life him. Everyone's like, Jesus Christ, he's been everywhere. There's a three <laughs> episode arc about that shit, yeah. and they're like, we gotta go kill R two D two, and it's like, no. Like, but yeah, the whole thing is like them kind of he's kind of convinces like Mace Windu to like R two D two. And then on Dan Tween, there's like a couple things that I do want to mention. One, you get you run into your first cave where you can get a bunch of lightsaber crystals that help you yes. enhance your lightsaber crystal crystals. Cave. It's fun. You kill like spider things, and then you also this is where you they suck. <laughs> where you first kind of get to see 
like the whole story of the game where you find out about the Star Forge, which is what Revan and Malak had found all these years ago and are using. And so you're trying to find these maps and which is this is the whole thing and lead you on your whole quest of the game. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's multiple different ones of them. And Re- um, so your like character has visions of them and can see where they are on the planet. So you ultimately go to. Yeah, it's I, I really I think that's such a cool story aspect of like like you go to the this dark temple and it's like, oh, here's a fifth of a map. Like you figure it out. I, lo- I love the idea of like a cartographer in the in the Star Wars universe. Like somebody who's got to go out and like find new planets or just explore planets and, and <laughs> like find this path. Rings. <laughs> I think it's a good way to push like the story along. But I I don't know. I, I I don't like the idea and they use it in both Kodar games where it's like you have a force bond and you have just like I get why your character can see the star maps and stuff like that but yeah I don't think the game does a really good job about showing you that the connection is there without just going like you're special congratulations we'll tell yeah. you later because they also do the same thing with you and they kind of explain it by saying like you have a force bond with Bastila yeah and mm-hmm. Bastila has a bond with Revan and it's kind of like like you're seeing him through her and that's how you know this and because you went there like now you know where they went it's it's very like it's very much just like here's what you have to do here's the way we're going to tell you how to do it and it won't make sense for you to you for a while but it'll be really cool later <laughs> yeah and also you're a new padawan and Bastila's is barely a jedi knight so we think you two should go explore the galaxy and do all this dangerous stuff and i love that karth is the only one who's like why are they sending both of you to do this this doesn't make sense do you not understand how none of this makes sense <laughs> and Bastila's like shut up karth we have to go to tatooine <laughs> well actually this is after you after you find that first star map that's when you get to choose what planet you want to go yeah. to there's like yes. four it choices to go to i mean i i follow what the walkthrough told me and i think most people kind of agree you go to tatooine first yeah because um, it's iconic too you know yeah i think at that so point you're just like oh tatooine that's where luke's from <laughs> and it also just like in the game expands to the companions arcs uh a much faster yeah mm-hmm. see i always do i i always do kashik first so you can get Jolie. So I can get Jolie. And then I do Tatooine. And I do Manon. Manon is always to... last. Manon, um, I don't know. Yeah, I do Manon. So I, I might do Corban and then Manon. Because Manon, you do to like finish Jolie's story. Yeah. Um, and you know, Tatooine, you get uh, the best character in Star Wars ever. <laughs> I never used him. <gasps> I I don't use him either that much. But he's just so he's fun, fun to talk to. I, I don't <laughs> like him. One of the most iconic characters, probably probably one of the most iconic droids in Star Wars after R two D two. Yeah, he's probably like like people who play Kodar, like that's their favorite character. Oh, absolutely! They, people like him so much that in the MMO, there's like a there's a whole um, expanded DLC where like you're 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 like you wind up talking to Revan in it. Um, oh, for those that don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about HK forty seven, who is a droid that you have to buy to yes. cost a lot of money if you don't do the one thing you're supposed to do in this in, in wow. Tattoo, which I didn't Correct. do it till after. Yeah. <laughs> it's only a lot of money if you didn't do the dark side, which you can I wasn't dark side and I didn't it's, race. Like it's, I had to uh, get it's also only money. a lot of money if you didn't play Zach for six hours. <laughs> I, well, so, I mean the thing about tattooing is when you get on the planet there's a I since I was playing good, the whole point is you're trying to get to this cave where the star map is at. Yes. But in order to get there and get information, first you gotta get rid of the sand people in this area. And it's kind of like you can either go in guns blazing and just kill everyone. And I wanted to do that, but it's all dark side points if you do it. Yeah. I think it's um I think it's my favorite game mechanic ever. I love this and I love when games do this where they say like you you're like and Coder might be the game that made me love this where you get to a planet, you have to get to the star map. There are obstacles in your way. You just have to find out how to get there. Like it's mm-hmm. it's up to you to figure it out. And if you're going to be like a dick about it, if you're going to be nice. Some, like when you play the game a, a number of times, you realize that some stuff's locked in. You have to do certain things, but it doesn't feel that way. It feels like you are just you're getting wrapped up in this story, trying to complete your goal. Like you yeah, land there, I... like, oh, there's sand people attacking us and there's a crate dragon. And like we need that. Like you need to work with these hunters, maybe. And to to clarify what Mike was saying is like the whole point you have to get this this droid is because you, you if you want to do the light side you have to talk to them and like nobody knows this language it's very similar to three PO in yes. A New Hope where it's just like we need to be able to communicate with them and then it actually takes a while to find him because he's not in one of the 
initial building. So you go through the cantina and then you meet Basila's mom as well. You do? Yeah, she's in the cantina. Uh, you yeah. never met her? I didn't talk to people unless the guy told me to. I avoided people. Oh wow! <laughs> I didn't uh, play this game right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is um, this is kind of like a uh, Mass arc. Effect, where you have to talk to everybody. Like I don't do that Mass Effect either, or like Dragon Age. Like that's that's where the story is. That's where like the game happens. Yeah. yeah There's even a great part in the cantina where you can go into the ring and just build up your character by getting into random fights. Yeah. You can. Well, yeah. I yeah. Um, that's on Terrace. We yeah. That's what we're talking about the dueling ring. Yeah, I think you can do it on Tatooine too, can't you? Um, there's swoop bike racing on Tatooine. Oh, I, did, I didn't do the swoop bike racing yeah. until the end, and I kicked myself because I had to sell the lightsabers that you get from the asshole shit that you have to kill that are hunting you <laughs> in this part. And I sold everything I could, blasters, because I'm trying to buy HK, and I actually had to be evil and make them lower the price for me. And then I got dark side points. And I felt bad, I was, but I'm like, you also if I could kill... have gone and played Pazak. <laughs> yeah, I never <laughs> bought the deck. <laughs> So, There's so many ways to make money in these games, Mike. <laughs> I had money after the, it was a super race. I mean, you win so much money from the super races. Because what I would do is I would just save before I did it so I wouldn't lose. So I wouldn't I have think, to waste uh, the credits. Another great way to do it is go to, like, <laughs> Uh, this is part of the reason I like doing Korriban so much in the first game is because there's so many Sith on Korriban and uh, they drop a lot of items. They drop, uh, you get a lot of lightsabers in Korriban. Yeah. <laughs> you can, you can start selling like, I like how lightsabers in the Star Wars, but those are like these very unique weapons that every Jedi has in Nice Little Republic. It's like, everyone has a fucking lightsaber. Here's 30 lightsabers. You killed a ton of Sith, pick up their lightsabers. Yeah, that was a cool thing. Except back on the Ender Spire, where like I said, you see a Sith die or something like that, and you can't and pick you up the lightsaber. Yeah. Oh my god, my friend is a fucking asshole. I, I, he doesn't listen to this podcast, but Alex, if you're listening, fuck you. My friend Alex, <laughs> when I first played this game, I told him I played the second one, and he demanded I play the first one, and I did, and I liked it. But he told me that asshole told me that if you played the game a certain way, you could get a lightsaber from the first Dark Jedi on the Ender Spire. I That's restarted this true. game so many times to get That's that fucking lightsaber. Fucked up. <laughs> I, uh, like I, Shen Long I, is in Tree Fighter 2. I spent like a week restarting the game and trying to do it different ways to get that fucking lightsaber. I was like asking friends. I was like trying to find. I had the strategy guide for the game. And I was like, how do I get this goddamn lightsaber? Like, I want this lightsaber to start the game with. And yeah, after like a couple of weeks, he was like, oh, yeah, I was screwing with you. You can't you can't get it. <laughs> God damn it. You so wasted mean. so much of my time. <laughs> oh, the other thing I want to say about like Tatooine, like when you do the whole sand people thing, like it's a fetch quest back and forth where you have oh. to to if you do it with the light side way, and I really want to do the dark side way and just kill all the sand people, but uh, I, yeah. I was trying to be I, I wanted to beat this game light side, did not want to go dark side. You know, Mike, there's another way. The gray What's the other way. way? <laughs> Shut up, Stuart. Where you can like lie to everybody and they can be oh, like, my guy couldn't. My guy lied. They just went, you're here, an idiot, and failed. And I saw a failed come up. A oh, very well, not, I good, not good persuasion. I think, I think you can skip like a whole section of tattooing, if I'm not mistaken, where they're like, you need to go get wraith heads to prove that you're like good or something. Or, or you, if you have a high, a high enough persuasion or you have force persuade at that point, you can just skip it. Yeah. Oh, I never got force <laughs> persuade on my auto level ups. So. That still... was the only thing I would ever use to get dark side points is like if I, because I was so under leveled because I was using it as like to, to heal me, I, my persuade wasn't high enough. I'd be like force persuade. And then I would get dark points and I'd go, Ugh, but That's it's okay. Well. <laughs> I, I always force persuade them to help me anyway and then i still go out and i get like the wraith heads and everything because I, I just want to sell them and use them for other quests and i the still jawas want are really cute in the game i love i, I love talking to jawas i think uh i think they might be my they might be my favorite like non-humanoid alien race in star wars is the jawas I in think. this game <laughs> they might be because i can't think of any other n nugget non-humanoid alien races not kind of like twi'leks and tegrudas and everything <laughs> too teeny Tutini! Tostino! <laughs> I have no what's idea the... what to talk about. <laughs> Stuart, what's the thing where, um, I think you meet them on Terrace, but it's like a smaller alien connected to a larger sort of like... Oh, uh, the ugly bastard. It's called, yeah, his name is Rikachi. Gotcha. Yeah, and you literally go, why are you so ugly? And I'm like, dang, this game yeah. is <laughs> not holding back. He is, um... I don't even remember what he was. He is an alien that only appears in this game, I think, in one comic. Because he's really interesting. He only exists to, like, 
to show you that there's more to Star Wars, that there's like a bigger world. That's the that's the only appearance of that creature in any Star Wars game or movie. And I think it's I don't know if he's mentioned or he shows up in, in one of the, the comics as well, just slightly. But um, yeah, he's just there. So you can be like, what are you? And he's like, you wouldn't understand. Like, you, you don't speak our language. It's too many syllables for you or something. And you're like, does your other head speak? And he's like, not a language you would understand. <laughs> Yeah, he's a um, uh, I think they're called like pair dogs or something. I'll have to look it up. It's been it's been a while. Um, yeah, that I, that only that creature only exists as like story building, and I love that they did that. Those tiny details make or break a game. That's it's the difference between Knights of the Old Republic and like Two Worlds Two, which is a game <laughs> without any story elements in it, and that I, world is just so empty and barren and boring. <laughs> I know that game. Yeah, it's uh, I, I thought about putting it on the podcast just because it's like, but it would just be as an example of like what not to do. Like, oh, and before we get off of Tatooine, a couple quick things I do want to say is one, you have the stupid side quest where you have a guy who his wife is trying to kill him, which made me laugh. But it's stupid. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? I, say, I, I <laughs> fucked up and I didn't get anything. I didn't get my light type points. But I told him, oh, I don't want you to use your droids anymore. Then I, and I, I'm like, <laughs> Where are my light side points in the game? Said if you ask him for anything, you don't get light side points. I'm like, ah, damn it! Can I, I uh, save them for one reason? I have to admit something terrible is, uh, even though I always play light side, I do something dark side a lot. That is very <laughs> evil, and everyone gets very mad at me for doing this. Do you, do you kill do? Griff? I don't. No, I don't kill Griff, even though Griff deserves it because Griff Who's sucks. Griff, Griff is uh, mission, mission brother. brother. Man, you really didn't talk to anybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Mission's whole storyline is about how like you where's, need to where's go. He, to... Is he in this game? He's in he, Tatooine. He's he's been kidnapped by the Sand People. So unless unless you have Mission with you and you've talked to her enough and you meet Lena in one of the space forts, yeah. you don't see him. Oh, but I skipped he... that. I didn't. Oh, I didn't no. like Mission. Yeah, he didn't really skip it so much that you just didn't do it in the first place. Oh, that's yeah, okay. back to his mom, which is like. I skipped that too, apparently. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you take mission there, you meet Griff. No, I always kill the twi- the other Twilight, the the hunter that comes with you to get the crate dragon. Oh, the guy that looks like Bib Fortuna. Yeah. I oh, almost cool. always make him give me Bib Fortuna. No, oh, um, I, yeah, Bib Fortuna. I I don't always kill him, but I always <laughs> I always try to get him to give me his other crate dragon pearl. And it's it's not that the crate dragon pearls are good. They're very good lightsaber crystals. It's just that I always use two lightsabers and my brain demands symmetry. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm sorry, I need that crystal. And he's like, but we fought together for this. I'm like, but I will have one in one lightsaber and the other lightsaber will not have it. And that's you not keep them how in the entire game. Huh? Do you keep them in the entire game? The crate dragon pearls? Get... Yeah, they're really good. There are, but there are better ones later. Uh, there's a couple better ones, but asymmetry. They got a match. I guess. But yeah, <laughs> even though you have like a personal crystal too, it's like poetry. They rhyme. Yeah, it's a, it, yeah, yeah. I'm like, when you fight I, uh, the crate dragon, I'm gl- I, I'm glad they don't make you actually fight the damn thing. That'd be you would never get off the planet. Or you just get the grenades. <laughs> oh yeah, I've gotten better about it. Where I will not always kill him, but my brain still says like I must have, I must have both of the crystals so that my lightsaber can have two. <laughs> <laughs> if I I only do that if I'm using two lightsabers though. <laughs> and depending and the next part that we're gonna mention kinda depends on what way how you're playing this game. Like if this is the first planet you go to, then you'll fight Kalo Nord will show up after you see yeah. the first Kalo star map. Kalo. It's Kalo. Kalo. It's Kalo Nord. It's K- no, you were right, Mike. It's Kalo. I'm it's, go K- it's Kalo Nord. No, it's Kalo. In the game they call him Kalo Nord. <laughs> no, in the game they call him Kalo. They call him Kalo. Uh, I remember Kalo. I could be wrong. <laughs> I am going to I'm going to start the game again right now. I swear <laughs> to God. And get that far to find out what he says. <laughs> but yeah, you're right, Mike. You do fight him at that point where, like, initially, like, when you first meet him, he blows you up like a permacrete det- detonator or something like that. Oh, yeah. He shows up Ooh. on every fucking planet. He's, Does he? Um, He shows up on Kashyyyk. He shows up on Tatooine. He shows up on... He shows up wherever you go next. Oh, I was about he's... to say, I've only ever fought him on Tatooine. No, he's definitely on Kashyyyk, because when you're leaving the Kashyyyk on, like, the... Oh, I can't remember what they call it, like, the... Um... Not if you go to Tatooine first and kill him. Yeah. Oh, does he just always so... fight you wherever you are next? I wherever your first planet it... is. Yeah. I thought you fight him multiple times. No, I don't... you only fight him once. Whoa. Only one real fight. 
I'm um I'm pulling up a YouTube video to see if I can hear somebody <laughs> say Calvin. Calvin. <laughs> okay, so I mean that and you guys had mentioned like that one of the hardest fights in the game. It it wasn't too bad, but it was annoying where you each show like many boss fights in this game, or many fights in general, they're never just one person. You have to fight him, you have to fight multiple cronies that he brings with him that are also shooting at you and you have to really balance the idea that like okay do you want to go for the weaker enemies and knock them out quickly or do you want to go for the big bad and that's doing the most damage and i usually mm. went for the weaker enemy because i get did... through a ton of grenades i yeah i spam frag grenades in that fight yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah Cal, that's the only way to beat calinord he's not nice by the way just want to point this out real quick just play this little clip you credit let me have quite a chase but nobody gets away from Callow Nord in the end. Callow Nord. That's him <laughs> saying his name. I'm going to have to amplify that, by the way. That was really that, quiet. I don't know if that'll come through in the mic, but that's Callow Nord saying no one gets away from Callow Nord in the end. Whatever. It doesn't look like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Anything about Tatooine you so want to say? Do we wrap really? up Tatooine? Well, I think the only thing that you would want to mention since you guys, or you didn't do it, but like you do meet Basila's mom and you find out a little bit about her backstory and then you get Mission's backstory as well. Yeah. So if you See, this is why I always do this second so that I can have, I want to get all my characters first. That way I can talk to them and like uh, get them all to the point where they, they want me to go do these things for them. Oh, but yeah, you can do this and get these two things done right away. Did you, you did Tatooine, right? This time? Yeah, so another thing we forgot to mention too is that when you're going before you fight Kyle Nord, you actually have to kill a huge giant dragon. Lizard yeah, the crate dragon. Yeah, well, crate dragon. Mean, there's just and, like a bunch of grenades. Yeah, and it's it's just a block, but uh, now in today's <laughs> standards, <laughs> but like behind it is a star forge, and that's really what you're getting at, which yeah. continues the story. So I just want yeah. to point that out. Well, I, like I wanted this, to ask um, about it's such a Star you kill Wars all the thing. Sand too. People. Oh, I never kill all the sand people. I kill. Well, hold on, that, that's not fair. I kill, <laughs> I kill so many sand people before I go to their village, <laughs> because you can kill a shitload of sand pe people and get their little rifles. Uh, what are they call the, they're like their their prod sticks or whatever. E and, yeah, yeah, and you can give those to one of the bounty heads for like a you ton of. It. Yeah, is it like a hundred credits for all of them? It's a lot of credits for them. Yeah. For each and thing. then if you get the chieftain's uh one as well. Yeah. The staff. Mm -hmm. I think they're all worth like well, six like seventy or something, and then the big one's worth like a hundred. Well, what's it called? Because it's a corporation that's basically trying to take oh, over the area. Zirka. It, it's Zirka. Zirka. It's the first yeah. time in Star Wars like lore that Zirka comes up and they play a huge part in both games. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are evil. They are they are <laughs> fucking evil. They're just like a corporation that just like loves being evil. <laughs> they're involved in like all weapons trade, drug trade, slave well, they're trade. The, they're the weapons manufacturer for the Sith. Like um, yeah. in some of like the lore outside of the games, they're basically mm. um, providing the Sith with all their weapons. I yeah. think um, I was the, I, I want to say that there was a reference to Zerker. Uh, Zerker. A <laughs> yeah, a reference to Zerker. Uh, there was a reference to Zerka in like Last Jedi, I want to say, in like the casino scene. I don't you remember. You know, the worst part of that movie? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think there's like a I think there's like a line or like a character that is like tied to Zerka. Yeah. Um, so Zerka, Zerka is like a company that exists for thousands of years and is just always evil yeah so I, I think what you're gonna ask me mike is did i kill all the sand people yes yeah i killed all of them including the women and the children <laughs> the children too oh no <laughs> you can't kill all the women and children because there have to be women and children left by the time anakin is born so he can kill all the women and well, children. there could be <laughs> other tribes sand yeah, yeah there's a lot they're nomadic um i mean not like this is one you know i know every star wars planet is one area where people live in this entire blank planet but we uh we didn't even mention how there's a fucking dune crawler in this game too like you gotta go to the jawa dune crawler it's just destroyed it's destroyed but i love the dune crawler so much i don't know why i love that thing <laughs> but whenever I see it in a game or a movie, like when it shows up in the Mandalorian, I was like, "It's a Dune Crawler!" <laughs> yeah, oh, man, that, that was a badass scene in the Mandalorian. With yes, that, it was. <laughs> I love him just like climbing up and like them just throwing like shit out. This, I love the Dune Crawlers. They're just, I don't know what it is about. Like, I don't know if it's how they look or the fact that they're just like giant moving scavenger pods. Essentially, something about mm -hmm. them I just I find really fascinating. <laughs> all right, this mm -hmm. is the part where I'm gonna. I think we said about all we need to say about tattooing. Yeah, probably. Um, I'm about um, to wrap up this first part. Uh, this sand is very 
<laughs> okay. All right. right. So what we're doing, <laughs> unlike normal, you're getting the. This is going to be the end of part one of this of this game because we have a lot more to say, and this is already a bit over two hours. So I, <laughs> which I really. yeah, two hours and fifty minutes recording before editing. <laughs> okay, we fun. So so stay tuned. You will get the second half later this week. We're actually going to record it right now, but it will be up Thursday or Friday, my Central Standard Time, Minnesota, United States, depending on mm-hmm. when I plan to upload it. Or so so stay tuned for that yeah. one. We'll be coming. Up. Should yeah. we mention that, uh, like, with longer games, this might happen again? Yeah. This is yeah. Happen. Well, at least with longer cover. episodes. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's the only way for us to cover some of these games because you can't. I don't want to do a. Yeah, this is too long otherwise. So, so please listen to that. I'll shelf and box customer questions and the rest of the game will all be in the second half of this episode. So, like, please hope you tune in if you like this one. Yeah, I'll say everything else for later on since so it's not the end of the episode. So, stay tuned. We will see you shortly again. Bye. Bye.